<clears throat> what is up, everybody? Dude, don't madulate me when I click on the thing five seconds after it says now. <laughs> what kind of behavior is that? That's not madulate. <laughs> all right, everybody. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Thank you for all the subs during the starting soon. Appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. X10 Maple, thank you for the 10. Noe YGO, thank you for the 3. Dragonfire with the gift sub. Appreciate you. Meltrelis, Concise Koala. Why I'm still hungry. Uh, Draco Sack, thank you for the 15. No, I didn't know that. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dominator, thank you for the 17. Grand Mark, thank you for the 16. Appreciate you as well. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's get going. Let's get going. We have a lot of stuff to do today. Today is going to be fun. Uh, if uh, some of you may know, because we did that last week, but we built uh, Sky Striker Snake Eye on stream, and I brought it to a regional yesterday, and I actually did all right with it. I'm actually happy with how it went, so we're going to talk about that later. Uh, we've got some new cards uh, to talk about for the TCG, because they're starting to drop Legacy of Destruction. No, not Legacy of Destruction. Infinite Forbidden uh, spoilers. As well as uh, we've got new cards in Master Duel that we're going to play with later. So today's going to be fun. Uh, ZV, thank you for the gift sub to Ray underscore cosplays OXO. <laughs> Ryu Tense, thank you for the 13. Neos W, thank you for the 15. And Lukash, thank you for the 6. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you. Um, YCS Sydney was this weekend. There was also, right, there was a YCS this weekend, in case you didn't know. Um, because there was literally no coverage for it outside of uh, a blog post with the standings that is it they uh they uploaded the standings to a website huge yeah big crazy uh crazy coverage for the ycs in sydney that happened this weekend uh maybe if there's a deck profile for the winner we can check that out cuz i saw that i saw that there was a lot of fire in top 8 i think like only fire in top eight so we can uh we can yeah okay there is okay we can check that out later uh caitlin think of the 12 appreciate you all right top eight was four pure four fire king yeah that's uh yeah that's something <laughs> that's something i mean may maybe that's where all the fire decks went from the german regional because uh we had no <laughs> we had no we had no snake eyes in top eight well there was one 60 card cash tira snake eye that made top eight but, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that in a little bit, too. Uh, actually, 5 pure and 3 fire king. I, I'm not gonna lie, the more I play, the more I play this format, the more I, uh, I think the pure deck is just far superior than the fire king version. I'm not gonna lie, yesterday, I played against one fire king version and four pures. And the Fire King version felt like uh, it, it it felt so easy, man. Like it, it it was just so much worse. It was just like they went for Ponics, and I was like, yes, I win. Uh, it it was uh, yeah, I don't know, man. The the pure pure just feels so much stronger. It I, I it, it feels so much stronger. But uh, yeah. Um. Let's warm up. We have a lot of things to talk about, but let's not skip our warm up. Let's see what kind of week this is. I'm, I'm, let's see if it's a Washua week or not. We'll see how it goes. Top 32 Salamangrate. Is there a deck profile for that? Because I'm also willing to check that out if there is one. Well, all right, let's, uh, let's guess some cards first and then uh, we'll do everything step by step. Yes. All right, cool. Good, good, good. All right. That is Strike Ninja. One of my favorite cards back in the day. Dude, I really... I, I, I feel like Billy sometimes whenever I say that. Uh, that is an Amazonist Trap. I think Amazonist Willpower. 
Yeah. Uh, Cremons. Yeah. Uh, Mercurier. This was the last thing I saw before losing my match for top 8 yesterday, by the way. So, of course, I do remember. <laughs> uh, I think this is the first skip. It might be some... It's some Metal Foes, but I don't know which one. Vanisher, okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Mm. Is that Blackwing? Onimaru? Yeah. Uh, uh, is, is, is it Dawn Dragster? Is it just the Spell Trap Negate? Yeah. Uh, I've seen this. Oh, I've seen this. I think. Oh, this is old. I don't know the name. I don't know the name. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's another small vanilla. That's, yeah, the level four. Oh, what is this called? Ancient Elf? Yeah. Is this one of the Valence Field spells? This is one of the Valence Field spells, isn't it? Uh, Valence World, I believe is what they're called. Okay, 50 Lost. Uh, World Legacy... Maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe not. No, I don't think so. Okay. This one doesn't ring a bell, I don't think. I may have seen it, but I don't know what it's called at all. Spiritual Forest. Um, is this Laquari? Yeah, okay. Uh, is this Magnus? Please be Magnus. Yeah. And this is... Gungnir. Yeah. Oh, this is Olge. Olge! This is Secret Passage to the Tread. This is Stooling's farm farming card. Who remembers that? Uh, this is the Z Call of the Mummy. Yeah. Eh, I do not know what that is. Alien Stealth Buster. Mm. Eh. I don't know what this is called. I've seen it though. Linear Accelerator Cannon. Okay, we're on a bad streak here. Don't know what these cards are. Trick House. Oh, who are you though? I've seen you. Oh, I've seen this one. Mimi Clay? That might be the one. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, it's ultimate offering. No, it's not. Uh, what is this? I I know what it looks like. Liquid beast. Nope. I do not. Oh no, that's not what I thought it was. That's not what I thought it was. Gruesome goo. Okay. <sighs> I, I've seen this one too. It's like something Judgment of the Desert? Judgment of the Desert. Yeah. Can I get more of the easy ones from earlier? I've never seen you in my life. Tactical Trapper. Come on, man. We're being, uh, we're low rolling. Give me cards I've seen before. Uh, Avramax. There we go. Scrap storm. Uh, Maximus. Do I know this one? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Who is that? Flamvel Fiend? Really? Is that a Flamvel? It gave me Unchained vibes, but I knew it wasn't one of them because I know pretty much all of them. Uh, ah. Uh. Uh, Stargazer, right? Yeah. Not the Octodix again. Uh. What's happening here? Oh, that's AI. Shadow? Oh, I shadow. I get it. That's funny. Uh, this is Ice Barrier. Too dark? Oh god, what is this called? I love these kind of cards. Uh I don't know what it's called though. Onikuji? Is it Onikuji? No, it's not. It's not gift exchange. Fukubiki. <laughs> Dude, he always looks so mad on these. I like I like that. Uh, catapult turtle. We had such a good start. Which roid is that? Police? No, it's not called police roid. Cat roid? Um. Hmm. Kick fire. <sighs> Aurora wing. Dude, it's just clicking simulator at the moment. 
Yeah, give me a Steel Swarm. That's going to help. Hercules. Steel Swarm Hercules. Yeah. Uh, that's a fur hire. Uh, I, I'll know it when I see it. Um, seal. Yeah. Bacon nine. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Dragoonity. Cool. Good thing there's only two thousand of them. House. House. Vampire. Yep. Uh, scrap. That could be scrap beast. Yep. We can save this. There's three minutes left. Uh, this is card of safe return. Uh, but ooh, that's some Cyframe stuff. Cyframe. No, it's S4. Okay, it's, if it's S4, so I'm skipping. I thought it was Cyframes. They look very similar. Is this S4 really? Does S4 have something to do with Cyframes? Uh, this is like something. Oh, oh Otohime. That's the one. Otohime. I think. No! Water emotics. You're right. My bad. Uh, K Kuro just hit. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate you. Welcome back. Dude! Stop with the octodics! I don't know the... Oh, this is uh, Lady uh, Ryu something. Lady... Uh, Robo Lady. Super Robo Lady? Super Robo Lady. It's the fusion, I think. Yeah. Uh, Shark TCG. Thank you for the five months. Yeah, we're going to look at the first Infinite Forbidden cards later. I haven't read them yet, but I saw some people being excited about them. So we'll see. Don't know what that's called. Laval Burner. Uh, Iron Chain Dragon. Uh, ah, uh, it's not a goatee, it's a uh, it was a secret rare, Abyssal King Shark. Yeah, dude, 699. Uh, hmm. I have never seen this before in my life. Kuji Kiri Curse. Exactly. That's what I've been saying. Uh, Jin's Ojector. Yeah. All right, we got 700 at least. I don't think we can get 800, but we can try. It's an evil. Evo Force? Evo Force. Oh. Um. Oh, come on. That's some Xyz thingy. I think. Seven Swords. No, I'm pretty sure that's a Synchro. All right, 7.30, we'll have to take it. That's about average, which means you guys are going to spam Washua, which is all right, whatever. <laughs> uh, Kini, thank you for the Prime. Welcome back. Slender Revolution, thank you for the 14 months. And uh, JC, thank you for the first-time subscription. Appreciate you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Spam it. Spam it. It's fine. All right. Um, but we will uh, speed run this today. Watch. Watch this. 
Effect Monster. High level, not dark, high attack, high defense, not an exceed. Newer than 2015. All right, easy clap. Um, let's try a... Let's try a um an earth monster what about war rocks is there a level six this one seems nice and it is an earth monster all right and it's an earth monster high even higher level than level six uh it's got lower attack than 2200 so it's between 1500 attack and 2200 attack it's got even higher defense than 2200 and it's from 2022 or 2023. Grand Tusk? No, Grand Tusk is too small. But not a, not a bad idea. Bayer Rock? Uh, it's higher than level 6. Super Heavy? Uh, I mean, we can try Super Heavy, but it's just an effect monster. It can't be Fenrir because it's lower than 2200 attack. Vera? Ooh. Nope. 2400 attack, guys. Big Benki? That's a that's an that's a pendulum monster. It's not a pendulum, guys. KB Sinuf? Ooh. Guys, <laughs> can we stop <laughs> suggesting cards that are more than 2200 attack? Is it that hard to comprehend? <laughs> Scareclaw, Cash Tira. It's got more than 1500 attack, though. It's got more than 1500 attack, and Scareclaw, Cash has zero attack, right? Yeah. Theory on Bull. No, Duke, if anything. That's... No, which one is the Earth? Regulus. No, Regulus is too big. But it's this one. Ah. Empress. Yeah. There's two Earth Therions. Yeah, easy clap. Easy clap, three tries. All right. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Jonas, thank you for these six months. And Jojo, thank you for the six months as well. I mean, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna... Uh, congrats on your, what was it, top eight finish, by the way? I saw... I thought you made top eight. Well done. Um, we're gonna recap it to the extent that's possible, I suppose, with the coverage that we have. Uh, I, we're gonna look at the winner deck profile. I heard that a Salaman great made top 32, so we're gonna take a look at that. Uh, I'm not too hyped to just check out every deck profile, though, because I feel like, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fire decks, you know. Um, a shark deck profile. If they made a deck profile, we can also check out the shark deck profile real quick. Um, I don't mind that either. But it's it's hard. I mean, it's hard to recap a YCS when there's literally no coverage outside of standings. So, uh, yeah. I can link it if you need. Uh, you can, if you could, compile some of the lists and send me a DM with them on Discord. That would help because it, it it's gonna, uh, you know, on 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 Twitter uh, on Twitch. I'm not gonna be able to follow the chat that much. Um, but yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> can you please explain the hand of blood tweet? Well, I played against them. They, uh, it's for a. For a future video of them. I don't know when it's going to release, but yeah. Uh, greetings, Mr. Schmidt. As you enjoy Paleozoic and Shadol monsters, you should play 60 card spit. Shadol, Paleozoic. What? Ishizu tier. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> we uh we're gonna do some uh we're gonna do some funny stuff later with transaction rollback, I think. Um But uh for now let's focus on TCG for a bit and then we'll go to Master Duel in a little bit later. Because uh we're I wanna check out the new cards for for Master Duel later as well with uh with transaction rollback and stuff. 
lab i mean maybe lab but let's be honest labyrinth is like the obvious choice to do with transaction rollback uh there's other fun things you can do. Like, I was thinking maybe we do some 60-card Paleozoic stuff uh, and be very annoying with, like, transaction rollback, needle bug nest, and, and whatever. But, like, you know, we'll see. Uh, that's for later. That's for later. And I also, I, I do want to try Earthbound. Um, I do want to try Earthbound Runic. All right. Um, so, order for order of things today. First things first, we're going to take a look at some new cards from Infinite Forbidden. Uh, it's a new archetype that I want to review real quick. Um, after that, I'm going to show you my regional deck from yesterday's regional that I uh, almost got top 8 at. I did lose the last round, unfortunately, so I didn't make top 8. But I still went... Um, I still did pretty okay for, uh, you know, considering what I played and that I only won two dice rolls in nine rounds. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to show you what I played. We're going to talk about it a little bit. We're also going to talk about the results of the regional that I went to because there was no fire deck in top eight, which is kind of crazy, but we'll talk about later. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some YCS Sydney decks. Um, and then we'll hop into Macedon. Sounds like a good plan. I think today is going to be very fun. I think we're going to have a lot of stuff to do. All right. Um, so the archetype in question, the first archetype, Outside of the stuff that's previously been announced, outside of the like retrains of other ex of old Exodia cards and stuff like that, uh, the first archetype revealed from Infinite Forbidden is called Fiend Smith, and we're gonna go through these cards together for the first time because I haven't read them yet. They just got announced, I think, this last night. Um, so let's go through them, and we have the 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 the, the Fiend Smith, literally, like it's just called the Fiend Smith. Uh, and it's a level 6 light fiend effect monster. Uh, 1800 attack, 2400 defense. You can only use the first, second, and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. You can discard this card, add a fiendsmith spell and trap from your deck to your hand. You can target a fiendsmith equip card you control and one monster on the field. Send them to the graveyard. Uh, if this card is in your graveyard... You can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck, extra deck. Special summon this card. Um, that's a good card. That's a pretty good card. I mean, just like... Discard itself to the graveyard for a free add. And then later on, it comes back from the graveyard for free. And it even has a bonus effect on the field. That's pretty good. That's a good start. That's a solid monster. Unfortunately, as we're continuing with fusion monsters now, this appears to be the only monster of the archetype so far. Um, Sinister Slot, thank you for the six months, and congrats on making top 32. Well done. Yeah, this is, this is pretty good. You know, discard it, later on it comes back, gets you an effect on the field. Pretty good. Pretty good start. Uh, we have Fiendsmith Lacrimosa. A level 6 Light Fiend Fusion, and it just requires two Light Fiend Monsters. So this archetype seems to be fusion-oriented. Um, two Light Fiend Monsters. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card is fusion summoned, you can target a Light Fiend Monster in your grave or banishment. Either add it to your hand or special summon it. Okay. Monsters your opponent controls lose 600 attack. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck or extra deck, inflict 1200 damage to your opponent. All right, so on summon, it gives you extension, uh, makes your opponent's monsters smaller, and it's a, I guess it's a time win condition, <laughs> is what this deck has. All right. Um, not, a, not an insane card, considering it's a fusion card, but the, in, like not terrible. The, the problem is... The problem with this is always, like, how does this archetype fusion summon, right? Because nowadays, that's always the question, is, like, how do you, uh, how good is your fusion spell? So we're going to have to wait and see. If it's just a regular fusion spell, this is not great. But if they have some tricks up, uh, if, if they have some tricks with the fusions, uh, fusion spell, then that's potentially good enough. And then we have another fusion. All right. They, they got more extra deck monsters than main deck monsters. All right. Uh, Fiendsmith DS Irai, uh, I suppose, maybe, uh, I don't know. Level 9 Light Fiend, uh, it materials one, uh, it takes the Fiendsmith, so this guy up there, as well as two Light Fiends, so this thing needs three monsters. 
You can only use this card's name's first and second effect once per turn each. Quick effect. You can negate the effects of a number of face-up cards on the field until the end of this turn up to the total link rating of the link monsters equipped to this card as equip cards. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your grave into the deck or extra deck, then target a card on the field, send it to the graveyard. Um... That is the first effect, depending on, I mean, so far, so far we haven't seen how they equip cards, right? There's nothing here that equips. So I don't know how easy it is to equip link monsters to this thing. Uh, this effect is pretty powerful because it says face up cards. This, mean, this means you can negate spell cards with it. Like your opponent activates talents, you just like effect negate it, right? As well as it does not target. Uh, the way it's worded here, it does not target. You just activate it, and then you can non-targeting negate like spell cards or, mo or multiple cards even. Uh, pretty good. However, it does require three monsters, uh, and it heavily, I mean, that heavily depends on how good the fusion mechanic for this deck is, right? Um, it, it, it really, really depends on how good the fusion mechanic here is, because if I'm just hard summoning this thing with polymerization, then it's not going to be great, right? Obviously, but we'll see. Uh, Demon Smith, uh, a Fiend Smith Requiem li oh, Link 1. Phenomenal. Cool. Very nice. Love Link 1s. Love me that. All right. Level 1. Uh, Link 1 monster requires one light Fiend monster. You can only special summon Fiend Smith Requiem once per turn. You can only use the second effect once per turn. During the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card. Special summon a Fiend Smith from hand or deck. You can target a non-link light fiend monster you control. Equip this card from your field or graveyard to that target as an equip spell that gives it 600 attack. Um, okay. That is pretty good. But it's also not completely nuts. But it is good because, like, you can turn any light fiend monster essentially into a lone fire blossom for your main deck monster, right? Like, for this thing. If you don't draw it... Like, what I'm assuming so far, this is just my first assumption based on the archetype, uh, you would want to pair this with other Light Fiend archetypes. Uh, you wouldn't want to just play this as its own deck. Like, you need... You kind of need, like, another... Light Fiend-based deck, right? To, to work with. Uh, what that's going to be... People in chat are mentioning... Magical Musketeer. Um, people in chat are mentioning uh, like um, Life Twins. Fabled is another life, uh, has a lot of Light Fiends. So there are archetypes out there that you could potentially pair with this. Um, and then you can just bridge whatever Light Fiend deck you're playing, you can bridge it into Fiendsmith, right? By, by making this. Uh, and this also puts, this is going to guarantee that you have an equip. Or the big fusion, right? Pretty much, which is pretty nice. Okay. Um, oh, more link monsters. Okay, we have Fiendsmith Sequentia. Uh, two monsters, including a light fiend. Uh, you can only use the first and second effect once per turn. During your main phase, you can fusion summon a fiend fusion from your extra deck by shuffling materials mentioned on it from your graveyard into the deck. Okay. You can target a non-link light fiend you control, equip this card from your field or graveyard to that target as an equip spell with this effect. Your opponent cannot target the monster with card effects. Oh, okay. All right. Um, now we're talking a little bit. Now we're talking because this gives us a fusion summon with materials from the graveyard which is much better than having to use it from hand or field right because we don't actually lose cards we just like shuffle a couple things back into the deck and then get our fusion monster and then we can keep uh, so far nothing here locks us into anything right so we can just like link this off so it is in the graveyard and then we can equip it to this guy and then this guy has the ability to negate two cards and is untargetable and when it when they get rid of it, you can send another card on the field to the graveyard. That's shaping up to be pretty good. Um, you can make Kaleido hard with the link too. Yes, technically, 
but I don't think that those I don't know if that's uh what you want to be doing you can negate three total you can if you go through both link monsters and equip both to the fusion monster you can negate three cards however I will say this might sound more broken than it actually is because you have to do that at the same time, right? You have to, like, you activate this effect once, and in that moment, you can negate three cards. And, like, for the most part, if your opponent starts playing into this, they can force this before you, before they have three valuable things to negate like it's not it's not going to be very often that your opponent just gives you three good targets for this like most of the time you're going to negate one card with it if you're lucky you can negate two good targets at the same time but most of the time it's just going to be negate one card like it, uh, realistically realistically speaking it's going to negate one which is still good i'm not I, it's it's good enough i think for a for a boss monster it's good enough um, but I, I think the fact that you can theoretically negate more cards than one is like a, a, kind of not that important because it's not going to happen that much. It's not going to be relevant. Um, all right. Pretty good. Honestly, pretty good set of extra deck monsters to start out with. Like that's that's pretty strong. Like we've got like this guy, which is extension. We've got this guy, which is a good thing to end on. Uh, we've got the two link monsters, which are really good. The main deck monster was also pretty good. Now we go to the spell cards. Fiendsmith Tractus, normal spell card. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. Add a light fiend monster from your deck to your hand, then discard one card. Oh, that's pretty good with Fabled's. That's like generically good with Fables. You don't even need to play a Fiendsmith deck for that. I don't know if that makes Fabled good or not. But that's pretty good. Fabled Lurie turns this into a free summon. Yeah, there's a lot of Fables that is just a free summon. You can do a level 1 with Lurie. You can do a level 2 Tuner with Cerberell. Or no, oh, that's Beast. That's not a Fiend. Ah, they're not all fiends. Right. They're not all fiends. Okay. Still, good card. Uh, second effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Fusion summon a fiendsmith fusion from your extra deck by using monsters from hand or field. Okay. So, this is another way you can fusion summon. Um, another way you can fusion summon. However, this time, the fusion spell is pretty much free. Um, but we do have to use our materials from hand or field this time. Okay. Um, this card is very good. This card is very, very good. Not even limited to the Fiendsmith deck. You can play this in whatever deck that has light fiend monsters, I'm pretty sure. Uh, especially if they have good discards which there are a couple of decks out there that have good discards, right? Um, that's a pretty good card. That's a really good card to have for the archetype. Uh, and then we have Fiendsmith Sanctus, a quick play spell. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If you control no face-up monsters or all face-up monsters you control are light fiends. Special summon a token, Fiendsmith token, light fiend, level one. Also, you cannot declare attacks for the rest of this turn except with fiend monsters. If a face-up fiend smith monster you control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, while this card is in your grave, you can set this card. Uh, yeah, it's like a mini Hornet Drones. Um, I think on its own, this card isn't insane. But just the fact that they have a Link 1 monster that gets them started is pretty good. Like, it's just, yeah, this just makes the Link 1 right off the bat. So it's a starter card. Uh, it's got Recursion. If your opponent ever destroys your stuff with card effects, you can, like, bring it back. That's, that's all right. It's not crazy. This card means the main deck guy is a free rank 6. Um, you draw this, you discard it. To add the fiend the fiendsmith token trap, a uh, token spell, you make a token, 
You make the Link 1, you tribute the Link 1 to summon another level 6 out of the deck. And then you can bring the first one. Yeah, you can bring it from the great. Yeah, this is a, it's a one card uh, rank six. Yeah, it is. No, that's good. That's good. Without normal summon. Yeah, that's good. You're investing. Yeah, you're investing one card for it. That's pretty strong. That's pretty good. All right. And uh, Fiendsmith in Paradisum. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. Target a level 7 or higher Light Fiend monster you control. Send all cards on the field to the graveyard except that monster. If your opponent special summons a monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card. Send one Fiendsmith monster from deck or extra deck to the graveyard. All right. Um, I'm not sure if I would play this. Maybe as a one of searchable. I mean, sending all cards on the field to the graveyard is a crazy effect, but it's a freaking trap card. Like, uh, as well as it's got some anti synergy, right? Because you would lose all your equips. So you have to like use your negates first. If you, you can't use the trap first and then use your negates for their follow up. But, uh,. It's it's not a bad card. Let's let's say it like that. Like for a card that is searchable, I I could see it, but like it's all right. But I don't think it's I don't think this one is particularly strong. Okay, I mean, honestly, for a first wave of support or for a first wave in general, for the first wave for the archetype with just one main deck monster, this is looking like shockingly competent. This looks very good. I don't think you're gonna play a pure Fiendsmith deck, but as like an engine in like other decks, this seems very, very strong. It's bad. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad. Or do you mean was that in, was that in regards to the trap card? There's no way you think the archetype is bad. Maybe you maybe you were maybe you were referring to the to the trap card. But uh yeah. I think this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good uh support for it's pretty good support for existing Light Fiend decks, is how I should put it. Like, whether you're going to play this with Life Twins or Musketeers or Fables or whatever, uh, I don't know exactly yet. Um, maybe you just use this as a one-card Beatrice in, like, other decks, right? Like, that, that has to be... One card... One card... Make Beatrice has to be worth something, right? That, that can't be bad. That just can't be bad. Or Caesar, yeah, because it's fiends. Yeah. Like, there, there has to be a way to make these cards work. There's no way they can't work. Right? Um, Odd Z Radio, thank you for the Prime. I appreciate you. Also, Deadly Operating System, uh, Miso Tesu, and Rolfus Rolf. Thank you guys for the Primes. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. That's pretty good. Nib protection. Oh yeah, like you can if you have a deck that's weak to Nibiru, you can play these guys to make a you make do you make Caesar before you normal summon. Well, oh, that's true. That's true. Nah, these cards are good. These cards are very good, I think. These cards are very very strong. Very nice. Good stuff. Nothing like yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I, I don't know if I I don't know if, if they are too strong or if I feel like they are just right. You know? I guess that remains to be seen. But um interesting for sure. There's a high chance Musketeers will get support because it's a light themed set. I mean they they I kind of already did. They kind of already did uh, get support, so there you go. Damien, forget the lyrics. Thank you for the Prime. Appreciate that. That's a full year of Prime support. Appreciate you a lot. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the only thing we got. Um, from Infinite Forbidden so far. I don't think there was anything else. Yes, okay. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get more in the in the upcoming days because the set is releasing soon-ish in the OCG. So at some point, we're going to see more and more of these uh, like uh, get revealed and uh, to review them on stream. Uh, it's it's looking good uh, so far. I mean, so far, they've, they're starting out pretty well here with the first archetype from the Infinite Forbidden. So yeah, I'm looking forward to more. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's move on to the present, or let's let's move back to the present, I suppose, rather than the future. Um, how do we do this? All right, let's let's uh, let's do let's do my my own regional experience first. Okay, so you guys were here, or some of you guys were probably here last week when we built. Uh, we started building my my deck for regionals together, and I wanted to play a version of. I wanted to play a version of Snake Eyes that wasn't just hand trap turbo, you know, compare your opening hand with your opponent, uh, throw a bunch of hand traps at each other until uh, someone gets to play the game and they win the game because of that. And so what we did on stream, we built a, uh, a Sky Striker version of Snake Eye with uh, basically a lot of power spells. And I, I, I played at this regional I went to yesterday, which was a relatively big regional. It had over 300 players. I played... Um, Power spell, Sky Striker, Snake Eye without a single hand trap in my main or side deck. There's a Kurikara in my side deck. If anyone calls Kurikara a hand trap one more time. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's no hand traps in my in my main or side. So literally my entire day yesterday uh, was spent watching my opponent's combo because in nine rounds, uh, I won two dice rolls. So I was able to go first twice, and I went second seven times. So literally the entirety of my day yesterday was spent uh, watching my opponent's combo, and then I tried to break a board, which honestly was so much more fun than had I just played the hand trap version. Uh, like no matter what, no matter what happened at the regional, like it was in, it was very very fun. Uh, I had I had a very good time, and that was honestly that was the point. That was the point of this deck. That's why I played it. I felt like it was way more exciting than just uh, chucking hand traps at each other. Um, and I honestly, considering I only lost two, uh, I only won two dice rolls, I'm actually quite happy with my performance because the regional was over 300 players, so we played nine rounds, and I finished six wins, one draw, two losses because I lost the very last round. Had I won the last round of Swiss, I would have made top eight, so I was very close. Um... Well, I feel like it's still worth showing off the deck and explaining what I did because I think it's like a it's a little bit of fresh air in a format that is mostly considered like, you know, tier zero, hand trap, snake eye decks everywhere, um, all that kind of stuff. And it was a it was a very fun way to uh, to to approach the format for me. I had a lot of fun. I I broke the craziest boards yesterday. I literally I OTK someone through Lamberge formula. Borlode Savage Dragon, IP Mascarena and the Spell and Trap Zone, Field Spell Up, Promethean Princess in the Graveyard, Ash Blossom in hand, Imperm Set. They died. It was very fun. Um, so, yeah, very, very cool. Um, had a lot of fun. Lost round two to Runic Stun. Uh, had one draw against Snake Eyes. And lost the last round to Gimmick Puppet... Um, branded because i lost the, the the dice roll to it and without hand traps didn't draw droplet uh got puppet locked um yeah so um no the deck was very fun uh i know some of y'all are gonna be mad because i posted i posted a, a picture on twitter when i entered the tournament with engage and people thought i was playing pure sky striker of, of course had you watched the stream last week you knew it was snake eye sky striker so Sorry, there's no Ray in my deck. Um, but uh, yeah, I still wanted to show it off because I thought it was a really fun approach and I had a very good time. And honestly, considering, yeah, once again, I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out because um, I performed pretty well. I played against five fire decks uh, and I, I beat four and drew against one. So I didn't lose a single fire matchup, um, even though I lost the majority of my, my dice rolls. So it, it was pretty good. Um, I'll show you the deck and explain you some of the ideas behind it. And 
it was actually there's a lot of cool things here and i encourage you to try it out honestly if you have access to the fire cards of course which is a big issue in the current format but if you if you do uh, I think it teaches you a lot of different skill sets than than the actual like hand trap version of the deck. You know, breaking boards, solving those kind of puzzles and all that kind of stuff. It was really fun for me, and I think it's going to teach you a lot. It's it's I think it's harder uh, for than the hand trap version, but that is what made it so fun for me personally. So I'll I'll, I'll go through it and, and explain some of my choices. It is very very similar to what we build on stream. I even incorporated some of the ideas that you guys from from Twitch chat had um, that I wasn't planning on doing initially, but I liked the idea that someone suggested in, in chat, so I, I I put it into the deck, and it was pretty cool. All right, um, let's get the let's get the quote unquote standard part out of the way. The Snake Eye package. Um, it was three Ash, one Oak, two Poplars, uh, two Flambrush. I considered cutting one Flambrush, but I I was I was working out some of the lines with like. Corner drones plus snake eye ash and for to to be able to play around nibiru optimally i felt like you needed to uh, i sided out one a lot going second but um for the main deck I, I i kept it with three and then i maxed out on diabel stars as well just maximum firepower when you go second no pun intended uh three bonfire one temple and one original like th for that part th there's nothing there's nothing nothing crazy going on here like obviously um, so here's the fun part. Here's the fun part. Uh, the, the striker package, I played two engages. I played one Hornet Drones. Uh, I played two Widow Anchors and one Shark Cannon. Um, this was like the... I, I wanted to make sure I have enough targets for engage. Um, sometimes I wanted to search for the second Widow Anchor. Uh, and that's why I, I decided to make it two. The one Shark Cannon is a phenomenal extender in the mirror match. I like... Took Snake Eye Ashes with it. I took Poplars with it. I took um, Promethean Princesses with it. Uh, it was just phenomenal, honestly. And and this is one of the things that this deck can do better than the the hand trap version. A lot of the non engine cards that I was using, a lot of the non engine cards that I was using help you play through hand traps as well. And this is what I was doing with the Sky Striker cards, mainly these three. If I went first. Uh, which I didn't do very often because I didn't really get to go first during the regional. But had I gone first, in theory, what you can do in order to play through hand traps with this is um, you actually make a Link Karibo and put it into the graveyard before you normal summon so that you play through Imperm and Veiler really well, right? And so the way you do that is you start with Hornet Drones, you make your token, uh, you link off the token into Kagari, Kagari gets you back the Hornet Drones, you Hornet Drones again, you get another token, you link the Kagari off into one of the two Striker Links that points downwards, I decided to play Kaina, um, and then you can turn the token, because it is a level 1, into a Link Karibo. And this is another idea that Twitch chat had, because uh, I was initially planning to just make like a, a, a Dark Charmer here, um, but what you can do is you can link the Link Karibo into Secure Gartner. Um, and then the Link Rebo is in the graveyard before you normal summon. Um, the Secure Gartner can't be linked off, but you can circumvent that. You just send it for Snake Eye Ash. You just send it for Snake Eye Ash, and then it's off the field. Um, but you have the Link Rebo in the graveyard before you normal summon, which is really cool. There is a downside, which is that you do a lot of summoning, right? So playing around Nibiru is a little bit tougher like this, um, but it does work. There is lines to play around Nibiru still. So what I what I what I worked out uh, Saturday night in order to play around Nibiru, um, the best way I think is if you normal summon Ash now and special Poplar, uh, I think in this position, um, if you don't have another extender in hand, which I mean this deck is full of extenders, um, but if you don't have any other extender, um, and you 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 would have to search this because if you search Temple here, you can just get Nibiru before you activate Temple and then you can't summon out the Flamberge from it, obviously. Uh, so you 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 search the original and then you just keep playing with what you already have. Don't use the original. And um, as if, if they nib you at any point, like you have a material from the poplar to send for the original, right? And go into oak that way. Um, so you just like continue here, Ash, send secure Gartner, summon Flamberge, play with that, right? And uh, and if they nib you at any point, you either float with Flamberge or you still have the original to float into to go into oak, right? 
So this is how I was planning to do it had I had the luxury of going first, but I didn't really. So yeah, I'll move the extra deck to the side a little bit. So where were we? Okay, Snake Eye package over here. Um, and yeah, so this was the idea behind the striker cards. Or this was something that they offered when you go first, as opposed to hand traps, right? Because hand traps don't help you play through your opponent's hand traps. Um, I also played three Droplet and three Enemy Controllers. These cards do, do two things incredibly well. Uh, the first thing is they are incredible board breakers that also play or help you play through your opponent's Imperms and Veilers. Um, I mean, Imperm and Veiler are in everyone's deck, so I felt like... I needed ways to to play around them because like going second normal summoning snake eye ash into a field and then just letting imperm resolve is like super bad so the amount of times i use these to dodge imperm and veiler is is insane like almost every time i had these i was able to dodge something with it plus take their monster or negate their monsters uh obvious honestly very great the second thing that they do for the deck is that you um you have cards that are good going first like um when you get hand trapped and you can't make the full board, you like want to have these kind of cards that interrupt your opponent a little bit at least. Um, the same is true for Widow Anchor, by the way. There's a uh, pretty good ways to uh, to use Widow Anchor going first, even even if you combo right. Because normally, if you resolve your combo, you have monsters in the main monster zone, right? But one thing you can do, for example, that I that I like to do is um summon out the ip mascarena and then at some point when your opponent has a monster on the field that's annoying for you like let's say like a flamberge or something like that you can like ip mascarena your entire field into a big apoloza then trigger your flamberge in the graveyard um and in response to your own flamberge at the moment your extra mon your your main monster zone is empty so you can chain widow anchor to take their monster um flamberge bring the pack two level ones you have a big apple you've taken their monster uh, you have like Promethean still in the graveyard. It's pretty good. So um, when you play power spells like this, you want to make sure that you're that they're not all bad going first because I still wanted to go first had I won the dice rolls, right? So like um, these were really good for that. Uh, I also decided to play... Uh, these were the best cards in the deck, in my opinion. Uh, Talents um, and Thrust. Um, I really wanted to main deck these because I felt like... These, these are what made the difference. Specifically Thrust. The card I searched the most often with Thrust was actually Engage. Um, because that card is semi-limited for some reason. And uh, like the ability to search that card. like Engage is what made me break the boards most of the time. Because this is the card that gives you more card advantage and more bodies at the same time. Like Usually the, the most common way I would do it is I would thrust for engage. I would engage for Hornet Drones, draw an extra card. Hornet Drones makes Kagari. Kagari adds back engage, not the second Hornet Drones. Adds back engage, and then the engage gives me Shark Cannon or Widow Anchor, uh, depending on whether I wanted to take a monster or take a card from their graveyard, right? Um, so I would draw two cards with it, and I would get multiple bodies with it, and then, like, proceed to make, like, Kita and all that kind of stuff, right? And so... That's why I really wanted to play Thrust. And I actually am playing a trap card for Thrust because this was not in the deck when we built it on stream. I think this is the only card uh, that I added, the only spell card that I added after stream um, because someone suggested a good trap card for it and that is uh, the Black Goat Laughs. I main decked one copy of the Black Goat, which was also a Twitch chat idea during that stream. It came up uh, and I, I actually quite liked this idea. Um... The idea behind the Black Goat Laughs is that it's a really good card to set off of Thrust going first if you get hand trapped. This way, Talents and Thrust are also really good going first because there's two scenarios. You either don't get hand trapped and then, you know, you just do your combo and that should be good enough. Uh, or you get hand trapped and then you can use like Talents to look at their hand or Thrust to set the Black Goat. And um, Black Goat is actually a quite good card. Uh, in most matchups, like in the mirror match, you can call like Flamberge when they tag out with the Snake Eyes. It's pretty good. Uh, you can technically also maybe call Poplar, um, depending on the situation. Uh, you can call whichever you want, honestly. It's pretty good. Uh, I think calling Flamberge overall is the best. Um, but it's also good in a lot of other matchups, right? Like you can call Low or Skull Guardian. You can call... Um, you can call... Um, 
against brand that you can call important pieces. Like, it has something in every matchup, pretty much, right? And the reason, ultimately, why I decided to play this card over other traps and why I was comfortable maining this is because I don't think it's bad going second. Like, I don't think this card is bad going second in this deck particularly because you have three Diabellstar, three Wanted, and three Droplets to get it into the graveyard instantly. And then it actually is good on your when you try to break a board. Like, for example... Uh, your opponent has an IP Mascarena in the Spell and Trap Zone with uh, from to summon out with Flamberge or Temple. You discard this for Diabellstar. If they want to bring out the, the, the IP Mascarena, you just Black Goat laughs, call IP Mascarena, and they can't use it. It's actually quite good. So uh, I was happy main decking this for that reason. Like It's much better than cards like Different Dimension Ground that are just straight up dead when you go second, right? Um... And this was pretty cool. This was pretty cool for, for that reason. Obviously, uh, I never said it with Thrust because I, I almost never went first. But um, I, I like the theory behind it. And then the remaining two cards uh, were one Magician Souls, which I felt like was just a solid bridge between everything. You know, like if you have multiples of these that are once per turn and you can't use them, like you have a multiple Bonfires or multiple Thrusts or whatever, you can get rid of them. Uh, you can get rid of the Black Goat Laughs too. You can send a Diabell Star to revive with Celine, all that kind of stuff. It felt like a solid card. It didn't feel good enough to play multiple copies. It was kind of like card number 40 that I threw in. Like, I basically, I'm pl I played one Reborn as well. Um, and so I was at this point, and I was like, what's card number 40 going to be? And I was like, okay, one Magician Souls seems like a very low risk kind of card. Like, you just, like, it's there. Um, it, it's hard for this card to ever be bad uh, if you only play one, because you can't draw it in multiples. Uh, it, it makes like it also makes Linkaribo into Secure Gardener before you normal summon, which is cool. Um, baits out hand traps potentially by sending spells away, trying to draw cards. Uh, it, it was it was all right. I only summoned it once and then it was okay. Most of the cards I only played one, like Black Goat, I activated once, it was good then. Uh, Reborn, I activated once, it was good then. And then Souls, I activated once, it was good then. So, like, it, it was all right. Um, overall. Uh, I really like the list, honestly. I really like the list, and I think had I won the dice rolls in some of the more crucial spots, like losing the dice roll against Runic Stun obviously sucks. Losing the dice roll against Branded with Gimmick Puppet also obviously sucks. So I think if I... Um, like, considering I got this close to making top 8 still, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Considering how much fun I also had uh, figuring out how to break boards and such, because it is it is really fun. So that's the main deck, it's 40. Um... The extra deck is a little bit tight, but at the same time also not that tight. I was able to play a lot of flex cards, like a lot of uh, situational stuff that I wanted to play because it's it doesn't have jet synchron, so no uh, no no synchros, right? So it's Link Karibo, it's the two striker links, uh, and it's Secure Gardner. Um, it's quite the extensive package for the Sky Striker cards, right? Considering it's a small striker package, but because I was playing Thrust. I felt like it was worth it. Like, I was able to get to engage almost every game because I was playing two engages and three thrusts. Um, so that was okay. I, I felt like it was worth it. Uh, and then IP, SP, the two charmers, which are obviously your best friends. The the striker package makes both dark or hita, with, depending on which one you want, because the uh, obviously the striker token is a dark, or you can also make Linkaribo with it. So, like, uh, Kagari is fire, so you can make hita. Uh, or you can make dark with the because of the token. So like really good to play into boards with these. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix came up a lot. Nightmare Unicorn came up a decent amount. I I added this one kind of like last minute um, because I had a lot of lines with um like engage and Snake Eye Ash. You can end on like you can like heart make a Pelosa. Um. And then sometimes you don't want to go into SP, or you can also end on SP. SP, I, I had a line that ended on SP IP, and then I don't always want to go into Apollosa because of talent. So I, I wanted Unicorn, and it was honestly pretty solid. I used Unicorn a couple times. Uh, Celine was there because we play a Magician Souls, we play three Diabell Star, and it helps extend. I didn't play Access Code, which is maybe the one card I, I should have played, or I wish I had. Um, maybe I would take out the Unicorn for access code because I did notice that Celine without access code it didn't actually come up that much. Um, it was all right. Celine was all right. But without access code, it loses a decent amount of value. So yeah, that's that. 
Obviously, Princess is here. And then Apollosa is here. Raging Phoenix is here. And Zalantis. Um, the only card I missed, like I said, was Access Code. I would have liked to have Typhon as well, but couldn't afford to fit it. And I honestly, I didn't really miss Typhon either, but it would have helped sometimes, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, that's the extra deck. Uh, it was pretty good. Besides missing the access code, I didn't miss a single thing. But yeah. I didn't use Azalea um, because I felt like there was not really a great use of... Yeah, Azalea can technically bridge two lights or darks into your striker cards, but... If you don't have access to engage already, there's no point in making Kigari, right? Uh, you would need to play Hayate. Um, but I felt like Kaina was better because I, the deck doesn't have any way to gain life in time and I didn't want to side deck for time either. Uh, and so like technically, if you do draw engage or Hornet drones, you have a way to gain 100 life points if it is time. Uh, never came up. It's not that likely either because you only have to engage one Hornet drones, but I felt like that chance was, was, was worth it. And honestly, the fact that like you can use your battle phase to get to engage is um, technically true, but for the most part, honestly, the goal of this deck was always, always, always to OTK. I, 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 and most of the time it did. So like having to use your battle phase for Hayate didn't feel like it was worth it. But yeah. Uh, the side deck was one Kurikara and 14 spell cards. Uh, I took out Bistiel kind of last minute, which I regretted when I stared down Gimmick Puppet, but it is what it is. Um, I had my reasons for it. Kurikara was pretty good. It was a very valuable option. Very good way to search the card going second and OTK people with it. Uh, pretty nice whenever I did search it. Um, never hard drew it. Sometimes wish I would have, but uh, I don't think you would play more than it. Than one but it was pretty good uh magical spring uh 100 win rate whenever i do this card i won the game has not have not lost the game after drawing magical spring did not happen uh completely destroyed annihilated fire king snake eye with this card uh i drew I, dude fire king snake eye with this deck and ironically i don't think you can lose uh against the fire king version of the deck whenever my opponents went first i was like praying that they would be playing fire kings because it's so much easier than if they make the Omni Negates. Like, I, uh, I played against five Fire decks, and un unfortunately, only one of them was the Fire King version. Um, the Fire King one I absolutely destroyed. The other ones I also did fine against, but it was a little bit harder. You, you, you can still beat pure Snake Eye, you just have to work harder for it, because they have, like, Omni Negates and such. Um, but nah, this card, this card was, this card was crazy. Like, against the, against the Fire King one, I literally went, like, draw phase, magical spring, draw three, discard one spell. Activate Soul Release, which is another card in my side deck. Uh, activate Soul Release, banish entire graveyard. That's three spells in the graveyard. Activate Engage. <laughs> nah. Nah. I was sitting on like... I, like they, they died when I had like seven cards left in hand or something like that. I don't, I don't know exactly, but like it... Basically. Um, soul Release uh, was here mainly for... I only cited it for Fire King because it makes that matchup really, really easy. Uh, because then you just don't have to deal with Garunix, you don't have to deal with Promethean, you don't have to deal with Flamberge, Float. Like, that matchup, you don't actually have to OTK them, because after Soul Release, they just have no follow-up, pretty much. So you can just go, uh, you can just break their board, make your own, doesn't matter. Um, so Soul Release makes that matchup pretty easy. Um, but that matchup is already pretty good, so I'm not even sure if you need it. Uh, but yeah, Magical Spring also destroyed Centurion, dude. I, I played against Centurion. They set up the, the entire thing. I, like, draw face, draw one, discard one, uh, and just, they, they die. Like, yeah. Um, it was pretty fun. And then I played three Dark Rulers. This was not there in the deck building stream. Like I said, I had base deals. I decided to swap it for Dark Ruler because, um, Dark Ruler is, in theory, pretty good against Voiceless Voice. I didn't play against a single Voiceless Voice, though. But it also gives you, because I don't play any hand traps, right? I don't play any hand traps. So playing against something like Monadium would be scary in theory, even though the deck is not that popular. I felt like if I was playing three Droplets and three Dark Ruler, I would at least have a fighting chance against those kind of decks, right? That make a quote-unquote unbreakable board. So I wanted to have it. 
um, and it's also pretty good against Voiceless Voice. And in theory, if you see your opponent has Jet Synchron in their pure Snake Eye, you could also consider siding it. I didn't do that um, because I felt like it was still possible to win without it. Um, because then the, the pure Snake Eye deck, you kind of have to OTK it. If you don't OTK it, it's going to be very hard. And you can't with that, obviously. Um, yeah. Uh, I cited three Cosmics. These were in the main deck in the deck building stream. I, I initially started out with having these in the main deck. I took them out because I wanted to main deck the thrusts, uh, which I thought were a lot better. Uh, and so I wanted to move them to the side deck because you want to cover stuff like anti-spell, cosmic, si uh, not cosmic, uh, anti-spell, uh, summon limit. Uh, it's pretty good against Fire King Island. Like against Fire King, you can take out a couple cards like Droplet because they don't have Omni Negates and you just side in like Cosmic, Soul Release, Magical Spring and just... You know, uh, it's a pretty solid card overall. Uh, unfortunately, didn't draw enough against Runic Stun, but yeah. Uh, there's a change of heart as another thrust target, uh, which didn't come up very often because most of the time you search talents or engage. But as an option going second, it's nice against stuff like Apollosa. Um, yeah, and then I played one Duster, which I think is very important because I wanted a searchable out to summon limit by... For thrust, because I didn't actually, I did not cite Cosmic Cyclone versus Pure Snake Eye, uh, because the 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 weird thing with Cosmic Cyclone against Pure Snake Eyes is that if they play it right, if they play it right, it actually doesn't help you prevent the Masquerina. Uh, like if they have IP Masquerina, like every and every one of my opponents with Pure Snake Eye went for this setup, right? They always went Heal Spell. IP Mascarena and Flamber, right? And other stuff, obviously. But, like, this is the, the dynamic, right? And the problem with Cosmic here is that if you start with Cosmic on the IP, they just chain Flamber to summon it. Uh, but if you wait with the Cosmic, you just, like, you summon, they chain Temple, target the IP, and then if you activate Cosmic, they chain Flamber again. Right? So you can't prevent the IP Masquerina with Cosmic, which kind of invalidates Cosmic for me in that matchup. I think I don't, I don't think it's good enough if your opponent does the right thing, uh, which all of my opponent, all of my pure Snake Eye opponents did this, this setup, everyone, because this is the line, the, the Temple line plays through Nibiru the best, so they all go for it, uh, and then they never just go standby face Flamber summon Mascarena. Right? That's just not that's 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 just not what they do, right? And so Cosmic, I decided wasn't good enough to main deck because of this. And I also decided it wasn't worth siding it versus pure snake eye because of that interaction. So that made the, the feather duster that so much more important because if they had um summon limit, I couldn't beat it unless I had Duster, which I have um three thrusts to find it, right? Uh, it's just, it, it is a little unfortunate if you draw Duster off of, um, off of Magical Spring, because then you can't use it, but, um, you, it's just a risk that you live with, basically. I mean, it's just a one-off in your deck as a searchable thrust option. I think it was pretty valuable. Okay, yeah, so once again, um, whether this list is better than the hand trap version or not. I, I doubt it. I doubt that it's actually better than the hand trap version, but it is 100% way more fun than, uh, than playing the, um, the hand trap version, the hand trap wars. Like the games that I played with this deck were super, super fun, uh, very, very enjoyable. And, um, the same was true for my opponents, by the way. Like most of them said, most of them said after the games, even if I beat them, they said like, hey, this is a lot more fun to play like this because they also had to like think a lot more because they always got to do their combo. Like, they, they, but then they had to like use their interruptions properly and stuff like that. Like it was pretty fun. Um, and honestly, yeah, once again, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it performed because like I said, I played against five fire decks. Uh, I beat four of them. I drew against one, so I didn't lose to a single fire deck. And... Um, I mean, yeah, my loss is Runic Stun and uh, Runic Stun and Gimmick Puppet branded with no hand traps. That that, that happens. I'm not too mad. Um, being one win away from making top eight after having such a fun experience at the regional two, like the, I'm pretty happy with it. And I encourage you to try it out uh, if you have access to the cards. Obviously, if not, then you know that's just it's a big issue this format. But um, I'm glad that I found a way to enjoy this format.
instead of just throwing hand traps at each other and still do decently well with it honestly um so yeah that's the that's the profile in case you've been watching this on youtube i hope you enjoyed hope you uh subscribe to the channel for more content uh hope you have a wonderful rest of your day thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you around thank you for watching bye bye everybody on youtube and we'll go back to some streaming Is there a reason why you double sleeve? Uh, yeah, there's a reason. It's just uh, the fact that I, I think it's better. I don't know. It, it keeps your cards safer. It makes sure that your cards all look the same. You know, like when uh, it, it happens sometimes that like some cards are slightly bent or, or whatever, right? And double sleeving kind of gets that out. Double sleeving kind of gets that out. Like in double, I have, I have never like. It, there used to be like when double sleeving, double sleeving wasn't um allowed until like 2020 or something like that, right? And sometimes there was issues when you got a deck check. It was like, yeah, this card is slightly bent or this card is a little damaged, you know, and like whatever. Can you change it? Uh, ever since double sleeving, I've never had a single issue anymore. Like it just, it's, it's always just been completely fine so i like that about it uh, also yeah these uh these uh sleeves with artworks on it they easily break right so yeah that's another thing why does pack single sleeve i don't know maybe a psychopath i don't know like with with the value of packs decks i would never single sleeve <laughs> All right. Have you seen him handling his starlights? I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't re remember seeing it, but I can imagine. <laughs> All right. Do you have many packs of the world sleeves or reuse one? I, this, these ones that I'm using at the moment, I have one pack. And I haven't changed, I haven't had to change a single one because I'm double sleeving. Like, I have just been using these Tins Worlds at every tournament I've gone to. And it just, nothing happens to them because you're double sleeving. Like, you, I, I don't know, you can use them forever. So, yeah. That's what I like about it. Do you change the outer sleeves often? Um, I change my outer sleeves when I go to big tournaments essentially right usually i'm okay with using them for multiple tournaments but when it's like a big event i get kind of paranoid about it i just want to have the the cleanest sleeves possible right so i change it before like before like a ycs or before a big regionals i just resleeve my deck but when i go to locals i'm not i'm not doing that it's like you know it's just dragon shield yeah i'm using the dragon shield outers i haven't had an issue with them like i uh I haven't compared them to everything on the market or anything like that. It's just the, it's the one that I started using at some point and they've been they've been fine for me. So have you tried inner sleeves? Yeah, inner sleeves are um weird. <laughs> I, I don't I, I don't know. People that use inner sleeves are suspect to me. <laughs> okay. All right, let me, uh, let's get into some YCS Sydney, shall we? There was, you believe it or not, guys, believe it or not, there was a YCS this past weekend. You wouldn't know. You would not know. Because there was basically nothing. <laughs> legitimately the coverage for, we're gonna take a look at the coverage for ycs sydney Niels, thank you for the 25 months appreciate you so much uh the uh the coverage for ycs sydney was the following that's it that's the coverage for ycs sydney everybody people clap <laughs> people clap all right so um 
YCS Sydney. Oh, no, actually, before we go YCS Sydney, I wanted to talk about something else because we were just talking about my regional. Uh, we'll do YCS Sydney in just a second, but there was something funny I wanted to show you guys, which is the, <laughs> the top eight. The top eight of the regional that I went to yesterday. <laughs> so I didn't make top eight because I lost the last round. But the, the, some of you have already seen it because I, uh, I posted it on Twitter. But this was the top eight of the regional that I went to. Over 300 players. And the top eight was three Fluanderies. Shoutouts to Emre. Uh, two Branded. One Voiceless Voice. One Labyrinth and a 60 card Cash Tira Snake Eye, which was technically, but only if you want to get very technical with it, the only Snake Eye deck in top eight. <laughs> I will say there was a there was a pure fire a pure snake eye deck that got ninth place with the same score as the other guys. Because they he they were X11. I that was the guy that I drew against in round six or something like that, or five. They actually ended up winning all the other rounds, and they got ninth place based on tiebreakers. So they very close. They had the they had the same score as some of the other guys in top eight, but they didn't make it because of um, tiebreakers. But um, yeah, three flew, two branded, one voices, one labyrinth, one cash tier, a snake guy. Which um, I think uh, I don't know. I don't know what what the explanation for this is. I will say one thing. I will say one thing, the, um, I kind of underestimated the, I, I think I underestimated the effect that not getting YCSs in Europe has on the people. Like, unironically, like, I've been noticing this throughout the last couple days or weeks, like, so many people have, have been saying, like, yeah, I sold my fire cards, I, I don't want, like, pl that, put, combine that fact with the fact that people always like to play, like, anti-meta decks in, like, tier 0 formats, right? There's a lot of people that don't like tier 0 formats, which is understandable. So they play whatever they think is, like, countering the tier 1 deck, like, you know, shift their decks here, you know, like, flow on the Rees. Um, and then pair that with the fact that a lot of people, I feel like, are actually frustrated. Like, I didn't think this was going to be that big of a deal, but look at, look at this, you know? Like, look at friggin' uh, Cart Market has Dark Mode now, by the way, Poggers. But, like... Promethean Princess is 18 bucks in Europe. 18 bucks, and this thing started out at 50, because everyone's just like, yeah, tier zero uh, fire deck, you know. Uh, Poplar, 14 bucks. Uh, wanted down to 50 again. Uh, Dia Bellstar is sitting at 30 or whatever. Like, it went down for, it went up for a while because people realized you actually play three Dia Bellstar almost every time. But then it's also now going, like, chilling at, like, 30. Like, it's still expensive. I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's cheap, but compared to what it was, it definitely shows a trend of, like, people are not willing to buy those cards when there are no events. Simple as that. And I think that might also be a reason why one of the biggest German regionals, like, just doesn't have fire decks in top 8. Because, I mean, there, there were fire decks at the tournament. Right there, were, I played against five in nine rounds. Um, but like, I looking left and right, I saw a lot of non-fire. Like there was a lot of non-fire. Like table one last round was literally a flu mirror match. Like, uh, people are down bad in Europe at the moment, cause like, fire deck is expensive. People don't like tier zero. We don't have a YCS, and um. People are also afraid of a potential ban list hitting the fire deck anyways. Like, uh, and I understand it. Like, honestly, I don't think my decision of getting the fire cards uh, is the financially smartest one. It's just I could do it. I, I wanted to do it to create content, and I obviously am fortunate enough to be able to afford it. So I, I did it anyways, but I, 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 I understand everyone that's saying like, hey, I don't want to get it at the moment if I'm in Europe because I'm never going to play YCS with it. And it's like too expensive to begin with. Like, it's completely understandable to, like, not obtain the fire cards at the moment or get rid of them if you have them. Like, and, and I, I think that is what's leading towards these kind of results. And this is a good segue, I suppose, for YCS Sydney, because for YCS Sydney, it's different. YCS Sydney, um, we have eight fire decks in top eight, 
right? So it's like, it's a, it's a more competitive event, but most importantly, you know, people go there with fire decks because it's a YCS. People are like incentivized to get the cards and play the tournament with it. Um, so yeah, it's just, I, I think it's just a, a combination of a lot of uh, things in Europe specifically that is causing uh, the cards to drop and people not to really, not really want to hold on to them, right? Because is the situation the same in, in, in the US right now? Like, are these cards, like, plummeting in value in the U.S. as well, or is it, like, different? That's something I'd be interested in. I... Hold up. TCG Player is the one that you guys use, right? TCGplayer.com Uh, Promethean. Is also going down to be fair. It's also going down to be fair. That's tanked. Yeah, oh, okay. Wanted. Also down a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe um maybe it has other reasons than just the YCS. Because it's hard. I mean, at this point, when I'm looking at the comparison and they're almost the same between cart market and tcg player then i guess it's hard to argue that uh, the not the absence of ycs is the reason but yeah uh it might be banlist fears more than the missing ycs but yeah still i mean can we get a ycs please pretty please i'm begging literally begging uh yeah i mean we're, we're gonna have to talk about banlist sooner or later we're going to have to talk about the potential ban list sooner or later, chat. That is something that we probably have to do. Rather sooner than later, because I don't want to be too late on it. But we'll see. Um, yeah. Anyways, that was my regional experience. It was pretty fun, all things considered. I was pretty happy with it. So let's take a look at happen what happened at YCS Sydney. Um... We're going to take a look. So what we're going to do for YCS Sydney, I don't want to spend too much time on it because I do want to play some... Uh, I would do want to play some Master Duel today as well with the new cards from the newest pack. But I still want to bring some attention to YCS Sydney because, I mean, obviously, like, <laughs> Konami didn't really want to have anyone know that it happens. It was kind of a secret. So um, the one thing I don't want to do, though, is look at... a billion different uh fire decks right so what we're gonna do very simply is we're gonna start by watching the winning deck profile which is pure snake eye uh, we're gonna take a look at that and then we're gonna take a look at some of the interesting decks that made top cut right because there was a apparently there was a shark deck that made top 32 which is kind of wild uh, there's a Pearly deck that made top cut, there's a Salamangrate deck that made top cut, like Vanquish Soul, those kind of things I want to take a quick look at, um, instead of watching like eight different fire decks, right? Uh, check my DMs, alright, so yeah, Skrelp has sent me a top cut breakdown, which we can look at before we look at the winning deck, okay, cool. Alright, so, um, we have YCS Sydney total deck breakdown, oh, this is not top cut, this is just total, okay. Total deck breakdown, we have Pure Snake Eye overtaking Fire King Snake Eye um, in representation for the event, which is the same thing that I felt at my tournament. Um, I played against five Fire decks, four of them were pure. And I'm going to tell you up front, um, from my perspective at the moment, legitimately, I, I am sorry, but I see no reason to play the Fire King cards. Uh, I think if you're playing the Fire King cards at the moment, you're playing a suboptimal version. You're putting worse cards into your deck uh, than there need to be. And I, 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 I hate to say it, I hate to break it to you, but I, th I don't think the Fire King Snake Eye deck is it at the moment. I like literally, and this is also from my perspective. When I when I play against um, the deck, literally, my opponent normal summons Ash, and I'm praying that they go for Ponix later like I'm, I'm just hoping they go for ponies because i know i'm a win if they go for ponies yesterday like uh i don't know the pure snake eye deck is it man the pure snake eye deck is it it was my it was my gut feeling on the first day of testing the decks 
and uh it's it, it's 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 just not it's not fire king it's not fire king uh the deck fire king deck is still in very good don't get me wrong it's very very good and it's probably more fun even than the pure deck the fire king version is probably more fun you know like uh, the fire king interactions are more fun to play against than the omni negates from the pure deck but um the pure deck's probably better un un unfortunately <laughs> All right, pure snake eye, fourteen percent representation. Fire king snake eye, then voiceless, then branded, then cash tier, then flu, then lab, then other. That makes sense. The only thing worth pointing out here is that combined combined twenty six percent is not that much for what people consider a tier zero format. And maybe this is where we also already have to talk about the price point again, right? Like maybe this is what's holding people back from playing this deck more. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, that 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 has that has to be the the reason why you know. This is just deck representation switch. I'm I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. But in a tier zero format, you would see more than this. Like, does anyone know what we had during Ishizu tier format? Like, how many people played tier limits? I'm pretty sure it was uh, a little bit more than that. But I don't know. Tier was not 1k? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Top cut breakdown? Let's look at the top cut breakdown. Top cut breakdown had... Uh... 19 fire decks. 10 fire king, 9 snake eye. Uh, and then the finals was a pure snake eye mirror match. Yeah. With, you know, Jason Huang winning the event. All right. Voiceless voice with pretty bad conversion rate, I would say, from like decent amount of representation. It's all right. All right. Let's look at the winning deck profile. Let's see what their reasoning was. Let's see what they exactly did. Let's see what happened. All right, let's go. What's going on, guys? We are back again with our YCS Sydney champion. Woo! There he is. Yeah! How do you feel, my friend? I don't know. Phil. It's crazy. Crazy? It's absolutely unreal. I oh, my gosh. I win that. Let's, t let's talk about your top four rounds. So who did you knock out in top four? Uh, I, I played Crystal Blanc in top four. I told him. And then Congress. I played Kamo Crooks in uh, finals, and I told him. Two at both of them. Yeah. Man is unreal. And you're playing the pure... Pure Snake Eye. Oh my Best gosh. Deck. Definitely oh better my than gosh. Fi Definitely better than Viking cards. Viking That's unreal. Cards Viking cards That's suck. That's it. To say. How many cards in the main? Tell him. Uh, Tell 41. him. 41. Let's yeah. jump straight into it, my friend. 41 for the vibes. Okay. So the first card, obviously, is three Snake Ash. Not what you say about that. Flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. Sure. That's it. Three Thank you, sir. Ash. Yes. <laughs> then double popular. Uh, what oak? How many times did you draw the oak? Uh, actually not that much. I, I did not see it when I don't want to see it. <laughs> uh, double flammer, so very standard. Summer. I would not play birch because the saw birch was just very tricky when you draw it. Yep. Sometimes it comes up to first you're going second. But Charlie, do we need birch? It's good. Oh, sorry. It's good. It's good. Trust okay, me. Yeah, birch is good. Where's your trophy? I, I didn't need it. I, I never <laughs> <laughs> They oh, they play Jet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this deck definitely has to play Shinko Monsters. Like, that's definitely why I win. Like, you don't play the... No Jet is just wrong. Like, you can't do that. Uh, one field spell, one you don't need any more. Very standard. Very standard engine. And then three Bonfire Power Spells, Cars Crazy. And three Black Witch. It's just so standardized at this point, man. We've been having this deck for how many weeks now? Three or four? And everyone's already on like the same decks. And three Wanted. And this is particularly a problem. Like this was it was it was roughly the same with with tier limits, but for tier limits, at least the gameplay was more interesting, I feel like. The hand trap snake eye mirror is not as interesting as the Ishizu tier mirror. Like no matter what you think of tier zero in general, like there's definitely like the the hand trap uh like for Ishizu tier, it felt like it didn't matter as much that everyone was playing the same deck because the gameplay was so different. Um, but now, like, this one is just like, I don't know. You definitely have to play 3-Witch in this deck, otherwise the extra bricks. 
Yes. I did break round one. Horrible. Like game three, I just break five turns in a row. Couldn't play the game. Oh my gosh. But, but I still won that game somehow. I don't know why. And I went for one. And uh, for the rest of the spells, went for one, three cross outs. Car was very crazy. It was, it was definitely the correct goal to play cross out in deck. I won Talent. Talent literally won me both games. In finals, there's a one-off in my deck. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know how. I just drew it. It was meant to be. It's just try it. You just wanted it more. Yes. And one lullaby. One lullaby. Oh one. So the reason why I didn't test, I didn't. It was Australia. There's too many rogue decks, and I was true. I, I my this lullaby was horrible, in Swiss. I declared five times in Swiss, both times whiffed, and the one time <laughs> I coded, it was gonna rise up to storm and knock against Thunder. Oh my gosh. This card was. We're not good in Swiss. I played only one mirror in Swiss. Yep. Every single else was rogue. But it was very good in... Actually, I don't even remember. I've activated in... Um, oh, it won me my top four match against Chris LeBlanc go, uh, going second. Uh, under some limit code Ash, so I couldn't play the next turn. So that was very good. Yep. But it was one-off. The reason why it's one-off is just so our style patterns work. Yep. Because I still want a three of, of this card in somewhere in our deck for the mirror match. But I didn't want too many in the main deck. Yep. And then for the rest of Nanjin, which is this deck is all about, three Imperm, three Ash, uh, three Effect Veiler, yeah. uh, three Nib, yeah. and then for the last room we play Double Mourner and the One Bell. Yeah. Uh, we thought about playing three Mourner, but Mourner is really bad to join too, like it's really really bad. So we just only play one, two, and like Bell is just like, it's like generic, it's okay against both Viking and the Snake Eye, not the greatest, so it's only one off in yeah. this deck. We saw about cutting Nib to two as well because this card actually wasn't that great. To be fair, it wasn't really that good in my tournament. But uh, as like it's just safe to have three Nib in the deck somewhere. That's why we play. Fifteen is low. I mean, yeah, fifteen is un is like lower than average, which is the crazy part, right? Like they're playing fifteen because they wanted to play the cross out with the one Lullaby and one Talents. Like you can technically play like twenty if you really want to. Uh, so yeah. For the most part, this deck is very, very standard. Any um any sort of change. My deck list, I swear, is like one percent more interesting than this. Yeah, that's not enough though. That 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 does not sway me. Changes you think you would make? Anything you regret? Or anything you want to make different? <laughs> 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 hey, I, in Swiss, I played against uh, one alter guys. A thunder. I called this card called Ash Blossom. Joy Spring. The data tell me they don't have Ash Blossom in the deck. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. I mean, I I guess. That was horrible, so that, and that was the way, uh, why, that's why I lost against Wonder. Because he didn't have Ash in the deck. Yeah. I so I couldn't make Baron with Witch. And how I wish got Chalice, I couldn't cross out it. That's <laughs> how did, crazy. How did you go after Swiss? What was your position? Uh, after Swiss, I was 20 seconds. Next yep. two. Do we have to do something against hand traps, or is the problem more with the Snake Eye engine being just too small? Um, I think hand traps are a fine concept. The problem here is that Snake Eye, or like in general, is when decks focus too much around one card combos, and especially when they have so many versions of the one card combo, you know, like you have Snake Eye Ash, Poplar, Bonfire, Wanted, Diabell Star, all that, like you have like 15 one card combos or something like that. Uh, it's like, it's just not gonna, like, it, 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 this is not the hand trap's fault essentially because there's there's like multiple reasons why hand traps are so so dominant at the moment uh and it, it it's it's a it's a two-way street essentially because on the one hand the snake eye deck just synergizes so well with hand traps because they play this it's a one card combo deck um that has infinite room for non-engine so it just naturally pairs well with hand traps but on the other side it's also playing against snake eye um, the most efficient way to deal with it is probably hand traps because like if one card, if one snake eye ash generates like eight cards, right? It's much easier to just veiler that little shit than try to break the board, which is what I did yesterday, you know, because I thought it was more fun, but it's so much more work. You have to do so much more work to deal with what one snake eye ash does if you try to break the board rather than prevent the board in this instance, right? So it's like, because this one card does so much, uh, this is what puts hand traps to the, to the front of everyone's mind. Like, this is what, what makes them almost mandatory. Um, unless you want to, like, struggle for the entire day, right? Um, 
so yeah and i and i think that is what ultimately makes me not like this format as much as i thought i was gonna like it because initially i looked at snake eye and i was like uh yeah this looks kind of interactive this looks kind of fun and it is fun the version i played yesterday was very fun but uh, the fact that like you can play so many hand traps in it uh makes it kind of obnoxious and I, I don't think that is the fault of the hand traps i think that's the fault of the deck rather than the hand traps right in this case at least that's my take on it i don't think hand traps in general are something we need to get rid of it's just we can't keep having these kind of decks that can play like 20 of them 20 seconds because yeah, that's I lost not to, great uh flu and the, that flu guy beat christian arena in the next round and then i lost to christian arena in the next round oh my gosh so that was crazy uh, I, was, I was almost dumb after that. I was like yep. round seven, but that was already. You like, like my uh, side deck? Does it have Phantasmi? Damn it! And I heard earlier you took a nap during day one. Yeah, day one after I just went back and like took a nap. I was just, <laughs> dude, both the boys were drinking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they all drinking. Bro. Wake I up! Alcohol like, everywhere <laughs> on the floor. That's crazy. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then for this uh, extra deck, that's the first. So for the secret monsters, formula, savage bar. I just thought about cutting savage a lot. But this card just you have to play this for the combo otherwise the combo is too weird to like play around him. Like I played against someone yesterday who didn't play the synchros cuz they cut jet synchron which I think is a decent decision at the moment because like my theory behind it is like if everyone is playing 20 hand traps or 15 hand traps and you don't really get to do your synchro combos anyways then why are you playing jet synchron which was their same logic and I think that's sound it's just in the matchup that we played specifically because i just let them do it i didn't have any hand traps and they were sitting there like i did they were like i i, I didn't expect to get this far uh and they just like made uh like they made like a standard quote-unquote snake eye board without the synchros and it's just like my deck just eats that for breakfast which is kind of unfortunate for them right they were like begging me to throw hand traps <laughs> but then i just like six card Comboed them into oblivion because they didn't have omni negates. It was very funny. <laughs> Stacks on other cards. So bad. So for Link Monsters, uh, Raging Phoenix, God Card, uh, Starlight, Abuza, Sanctuary, Dawn, whatever, doesn't matter. Starlight, Accessible, uh, Atlantis, Promethean Princess, Sling, Sling's Management in this deck, Nightmare Phoenix, very good. This card was crazy too. I was summon limit a lot of times. Yes. And then Nikita. Uh, oh my Dark. gosh, look at these. Then SP, one SP, this deck only needs one SP, one IP, and one Link. Pretty well. So the only, I guess, not the most extended is this Access Gold. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, Access Gold is mandatory in this deck. Like, it's definitely better than Typhoon, in my opinion, because a lot of times you have to kill in the Nib, you need to be able to make Access Gold first to force, and then save a Charmer. So you can Charmer take and make Promethean to OTK with Zelantis after getting Nib. Okay. That's, that's the reason why you have to play Access Gold. And also, Access Gold just. I should have really played Access Code. I should have played Access Code. I think if I play Access Code, I probably beat the, the brand that I lost to uh, in last round. Yeah. Gordon, I guess. I guess voices. I just didn't play against a single voiceless actually. No voiceless at all. I don't know how. My old top card was just Viking mirrors. <laughs> it also would have helped against Runic Stun because I it, it can outskill it rain. Yeah. Viking until the finals of pure pure mirror. Oh my gosh. I don't play a single voiceless, which I'm glad. I don't want to play against voiceless. No. <laughs> like, it's like hard with the voiceless. Oh no, I, I don't think Tarmac come up a single time. Yeah. I mean, I didn't play it, but I don't think that's I another have... difference. This deck is actually not that great into voiceless voice when you go second. My deck like also eats voiceless voice for breakfast because board breakers are so good against voiceless. Me any single game, like if I had Typhoon. Access Gold, in testing the best card, actually, for the 15 slot. Cool, that's good tonight. And for the uh, for extra deck, for the side deck, my GOAT, this entire tournament, Gamma, uh -huh. I do it six times, five to six times in the entire tournament, <laughs> and definitely won me a, a lot of time. I Gamma nib uh, my opponent in run, uh, top card, round two, the second, second round into top card, but I, I lost again because I didn't know he had the rank, the, 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 the Regronix uh, XYD in his deck, so I lost to the board wipe. I was like, ah, okay, I guess I played that. <laughs> that was crazy, bro. I don't know why people played that. I did, it did definitely call me off a guard. So I lucky. I mean, you need that to win a YCS. Like, uh, you do need some luck. That's, that's part of it, you know? And the two Delta and the one. Uh, like, Viper. whoever wins a YCS is always going to have some story throughout the tournament of where they got very lucky. Like, that's just, it, it doesn't really work without that. You need a lot of skill and you need to, you need to play very well throughout the event. But at some point in the in in the tournament, like you just sometimes you need that little bit of luck, you know. You need to draw that good hand, right, to take someone else down. That's right, just how play, it is. It was three Delta before. But this card is so bad to draw in two rolls. Like th this this lore, you know, two just lose. So it doesn't deliver nothing. So like it's like three four for side finance, it's like fine. Sometimes you draw What? Uh, I just need to switch. Yeah. Okay, I don't know when. I I didn't really draw like. I mean, okay, okay, I go round one. When yeah. I break five times, I have to cross out Jason Tron. No one's someone to kill him. I have to bring five turns in a row. I need to draw a single playable card five turns. That's oh my gosh. And for the Bestials, Magnum, Drew's Room, Drew's Room, and Bodrix. Yep. Uh, you didn't want four Bestials in the deck. I love Bestials, man. Really terrible, um, voiceless matchup. I mean, it didn't really come up to be fair in Tide Tournament. Uh, one time, 
I have to go. I need extender so I can uh, have something to send off Ash. So I just on my own Veiler and then Ash sends Jusun and I kill him. Uh, it was Brandon, I think. He bricked. <laughs> and I'm Veiler him past, which is, you know, people play Brandon, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> why do you play that thing? Well, that's so bad, bro. Uh... And then Kurikara. Uh, Kurikara was just for, um, mostly for, I think, searchable in some case if you want. It's like, it's very similar to Birch, but like, I only want like, those kind of cards going second. So, like, it's very, it's very similar to uh, preference to Birch with like, standard. But uh, I. Okay, the only time I searched Kurikara lost, I think, I mean, anyway. The card was blocked. It, it didn't like, come up. And then two Lullaby, just so we have two for the mirror match. Yep. And then for the back row, so we, we hate Australia meta. All this Rogue decks. <laughs> double Lightning Storm. Uh, Space Psycat, thank you for the 11 months. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Double Cosmic Cyclone. So Cosmic Cyclone is okay going first against some matchup. So that's why I played it. And you notice this entire side deck, we have no um, going first cards. Yep. I just have this deck is crazy going first. As long as it combos, I'm never losing again. And my only... I mean, my only loss when I went first was Aizen's flu. He had six card perfection, just cooked me when I make my board. Absolutely six card perfection. And then against Christian Urena, when I went first both times, I just lost because I just, I just bad. <laughs> I just misplayed like out of my way. That was bad. Okay. And uh, that is the entire deck. Um, awesome. For shoutouts. First of all, we have to shout out uh, Grandi. Yeah, it's a, it was definitely a solid list, but it's like, it's very, it, it doesn't really deviate from the standard that much, right? Um... All right, I'll 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 speed through it because you've been begging me to look at it, uh, so Jojo. I'll look at it. I personally went uh, X1 in Swiss in ten rounds. So I went nine one. Viking Snake Eye Festival. There's but we're speeding through the list because I said one fire deck, and you've been begging me to do it. Okay. Bring one dive spell. So there's obviously an argument to play more witch, but consistency. Criminal activity. Prioritize non engine, and I don't play temple, and so this has only the utility of getting original. So at the end of the day, I thought one was fine. Then for the Vikings, I play three Kieran, one Ponix, one Garenix, and then the best one all weekend, Barong. Shout out to every person who cut this card from the deck. I think I was. Right. Viking in six bad like, cards. Maybe the whole YCS today, uh, this past weekend, played Barong. <laughs> um, don't worry, I didn't forget my Avata at home. I just didn't play it at all. So the idea with Barong is that worst case scenario, if you get Nib comboed, like Nib Vela, Nib Impem, Nib Ash, or just like Nib in general, worst case scenario, because um, I always pop Ponix off Viking Island, I consistently end on a worst case through Nib, like a Ponix setback in standby phase and a Barong search for Kieran. And that still converts to a Kieran pop on their turn and a Grunix XYZ because I play the XYZ. The only good thing about this engine is that Kieran can dodge Imperm. That's the only good thing about this. I I think I like I don't I don't want to come off as a hater, but genuinely, the more I play this format, the less I understand why people play Fire King cards. And I play nineteen on agents. I, I don't usually get it. Four of the cards in the hand usually being hand traps. Um, I played against Yassine in like Swiss, and we are both at like eight zero at that point, and he nibs me, and I have cross out. I just don't even cross out it. I just sit on cross out for his turn, and I just still play through Nibiru and stuff like that. But this one's amazing. This one gives you the best recovery through Nib. Um. And also, a lot of the end boards that you have to make if you don't play uh, Barong, you play Avatar. A lot of those end boards are like Appaloosa end boards, and they play really badly. Play it versus non-fire decks? Okay, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's it, Maybe it's better against non-fire decks, but I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm playing Snake Eye pure and they're playing non-fire, I, I still think that's relatively easy. Like, uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think that's the problem. I don't think the problem of fi fire decks is to play against non-fire decks. Cartridge and cosmic cycle so, as well. so like I, 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 I think pure snake i still cooks scenario, I guarantee, uh, it's not, so that's not the like problem so good no one else played this um i really liked it a lot obviously elephant is also really good but um a lot of the combos in the deck the deck's just much easier with this one too which is good i uh, played one sank and island um i actually like the viking spells like skyburn and circle but i didn't feel like it was necessary you really want to prioritize the non-engine and one one is pretty much all you need and i played three bonfire obviously. okay good cards again three wanted obviously shout out to kodai for the qcs uh i played one for one and original uh, nothing really to be said here. All these cards are FTKs that are just broken for a reason. This card's especially broken. Um, and yeah, that's it for engine. It's uh, pretty standard stuff. Uh, for non-engine, I played 15 hand traps. Um, nothing really to be said here. It's just hand traps. Um, yeah, bro, look at my deck profile. You're gonna like my deck profile. My deck profile is really special. You have to draw two to have a chance to win. So 15 hand traps. I didn't play Mona. Um, I don't think that card's real, but it's like whatever. I think that all of these in combination are really good. And then finally, I played Quattro Designator and Kobai. I thought okay. I was cool playing this, but then it turns out everyone plays this, and I'm not cool at all. So I think everyone's on engine's like pretty identical. The side so is okay, okay, okay. Um, for the extra deck, I played Link Rebo and Anima. This one's really important. This one lets you um, deal with like cards like Kieran for the Zalantis OTK because you can pop your Flame Burge and then get level ones, and then Anima and Munch that guy. Uh, I played. Oh, also this one's really good to like have free face up cards to send up your Snake Eyes, which is really good. I played IP, SP, Dark, Eater, and Nightmare Phoenix. I think the only thing of note here is I don't play Sunlight Wolf because I always guarantee uh, Kieran access through Barong, so there was just a need to play uh, Sunlight Wolf for me. I played one Princess. Um, because I don't play uh, Avatar, you don't need the second Princess because the only time the second one comes up is for like anti Nibiru combos where you force out the Nibiru by making the first Princess, and then they Nibiru, and then you Flame Burge bring back two, and then you make the second Princess to bring back the Elephant. Um, so I only need one, and instead of those uh, Sunlight Wolf and the second princess, I played Selene and Axis Code. This one I think is really important because I feel like in the mirror you just need as many ways to kill as possible. Because um, if you don't kill the mirror, their follow ups too crazy. So I just wanted to have as many different ways to go per game. And a lot of the time you can test with Nibiru with this stuff first because Axis Code and Flame Edge is already 83 damage. And then if they need. Uh, Space Region, thank you for the six months. Uh, Kashira Snake Eye. 
I don't know. That, that felt like it. It's not bad because it's a Snake Eye deck, but it it's I don't nah. I don't think it's real. You you just do the Zalantis Raging Phoenix OTK off top. So I just want to have as many ways to kill. Uh, Amblo Whale, this is the best one. My favorite board in this deck is just going sometimes Amblo Whale pass. Like everyone thinks that board sucks, but that's like eight interruptions. So I always would prioritize making Amblo Whale um, because I have Kieran and Ponix and then just like IP in the grave, and that's like and I play the XYZ, so it's like six seven interruptions. So this one's really humble, plays around a lot, uh, plays really good into tactics. Like, There's a lot of it uh, in Master Duel. Yeah, but that's because Cash Tira cards are pretty good into Maxi. Like, if you start Special Unicorn in the Fire Mirror and your opponent Max sees you, you just like, all right, rip your princess. And that's pretty good. Shoutouts to the Flunderies player that I just blind made. Like, against this deck, unironically, Cash Tira Unicorn extra deck rip is, is really impactful. Because, like, the, <laughs> without Princess Man, life is hard. Against, and he was really sad. Um, and then I played the Hyang. This card's mandatory. I don't know, like, you can't cut this card. Even if you don't play Baron, play Abata, there are combos where if you have, like, Kieran plus Snake Okay, Ash, where's you your, cool plays, where you where's your fancy um, side deck, so Mr. Jojo? Uh, it's Konzi. Thank you for the, the tier one sub. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Deck. So, shout out to Peter. Uh, we worked on the side deck together. Uh, this is, like, the craziest side deck there ever. <laughs> Give me some up. juicy tactics, ideas. Uh, for going first, wow. But Talents. it's also amazing going second in the mirror match. So, Crazy. Um, I don't play any floodgates, I don't play summon limit, I don't play solemn strike, I don't play anti spell fragrance because the idea is like I'd rather insulate and guarantee my combo resolves. I like and snatch I like If I resolve my combo, which is like envelope flame bridge IP with Kieran Ponix in hand and four other cards in the hand, it's like FTK. Like you can't really beat that to be honest in my opinion. So I would rather have like my combo resolve with cross out talent and all by my deck post side, uh, which is really good. So you have like these post side, and then you have like seven answers to hand traps, which is like bonkers. Um, but then this one has other utility because going second, I tied it in going second in the mirror match and it goes hard because the take control effect is so broken. And so then one night at 2 a.m. in the morning, Peter calls me and he's like, with everyone making Appaloosa boards, what if you just take that Appaloosa? So then we're well, like, as a joke, let's just put in change of heart and just snatch steal for fun. And then it turned out these cards were broken. So then we just double down and play three mind control as well. And the idea is you have like eight take control cards going second in the mirror match. And you can just like brick on these cards, which is so broken because not only do they. Dude, just play the, just play the board breaker version that I played then. If you want these kind of cards. I don't, the, the reason I, okay. So these are cool cards. I'll give you that. These are cool cards. However, I don't know if I like this because, like, what's the point of playing 15 hand traps if you want your opponent to make a board? And unironically, I've had, I, I think, against good opponents, I don't think this is that great because I, um, we side out all the hand traps. Okay. Or he, he sides them all out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, my, my concern with this would be that, uh, I had a lot of opponents yesterday that didn't make Apollosa. They didn't make Apollosa. And uh, that is a problem. They made SP Little Knight instead, which I think is better if you want to play around cards like these. Uh, like against me, they made, they, made, they made IP into SP almost all the time. And that's, uh, that's scary if you want these cards, right? break your opponent's board but their engine as well because you just make charmers and then you take their snake eye monsters and you full combo them which is bonkers um also a really the, my issue is if you actually think this strategy works right why are you not maining it like i did at my regional yesterday right like if you think this is the way to go in the mirror match why are you committing to eight cards only because i get the idea right like take their stuff make charmers and all that cool you know i get it but like i don't know because they're bad going first. Well, like, mind control is, yeah, but, like, you, I, I played Thrust instead with, like, Black Goat and stuff like that. Like, you don't need to play th these cards in the main deck, you know? Enemy, Droplet, uh, Talons, Thrust. Like, it, it was completely fine going first. A really important one about... I only won two dice rolls, but I didn't lose a single game going first, so... The take control cards is uh, they deal really well with summon limit because especially if you open like a take control card plus Nibiru, I would like nib them, use mind control, take their token, make a nightmare phoenix, and then pop their summon limit. And then these were really good into limit and back row, uh, like floodgates and stuff like that. So these ones alone are like the craziest cards. They're broken, they go hard. Um, then I play two soul release. Uh, this card's crazy, nothing really be said for Fire King uh, explicitly. However, it's really niche in its utility, so that's why I only play two. I played three at Vegas, but I cut the third, so I released for one MST. Um, the idea Dude, being that I thought about playing MST, but I didn't do it because I, w I played Magical Spring and I didn't want to draw MST with Magical Spring. I thought about playing MST. Post side, if you play like four outs to like summon limit and uh, anti spell fragrance, you have a 46, like a 50% chance in 43 cards with a six card hand to draw one of these four. And I just didn't want to auto lose to summon limit and anti spell. And these ones are really good, like you can hit Fire King Island, uh, they go hard in general, hit Die Fire, hit summon limit. Um, and yeah, and then the last card was Monster Reborn. So my side. Yeah, so I. I think I agree with you. Your side deck is very fun. I, I do like your side deck. Um, I, I, I think the problem with this is that it's just kind of like not enough. Like, I think this approach 
doesn't work if you don't full commit to it right like if you if you if your idea is we take out some hand traps and we add in some board breakers i think you don't end up with a good enough version of the deck it can work i i do i do understand that like i do think like if your opponent just makes an apple because they're trying to play around your hand traps that you don't have because you sided them out uh and then you can like mind control it that is really good um but I, th I think, like, one thing that I did, for example, uh, with the list that I played yesterday, um, I, a couple times, I didn't actually mention this during the deck profile, I wanted to say that, but I forgot. Uh, one thing I did three or four times in the fire matchup is I, I, I lost game two, right? And then I sided, and my opponent sided, assuming that I would go first, right? They, they sided for going second. And I was like, all right, side deck, done. And I just said, go first. You go first. I did that three times and I killed them every time because there was no summon limit in their deck, no anti-spell in their deck. Uh, like they, they sided completely for going second. I sided for going second and I told them you go first. And I killed them every time. Uh, that sort of stuff can work, right? I don't know if it, I don't know if it works. Um, with this approach because you i don't think you have enough like i don't think you have enough cards like uh i i don't i don't believe in i don't believe if my opponent plays snake eye and i know that probably like summon limits go in or something like that you know uh to just like take out my hand traps and like play these cards instead i don't think it's enough I don't think it's enough if you don't have... Because like, I had... My version was different. I had, like, thrusts and engages and, like, I had so much more stuff to do. Uh, but in general, the take your opponent's stuff approach does work. I just don't know if I like siding into it, like, smoke screening into it. Like, play 15 hand traps in the main and then take some of them out. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sweet idea. I just think if you think that's a good call, I think you should full commit to it uh, in the main deck. Which does... It can work. Like, my version didn't feel far off. Like, I think if you work on it more, I think you can work out. And I don't think it's actually that bad going first, my version. Because, like, my version going first, it had, like, Engage helps you play through hand traps with Imperm. Like, it plays, it helps you play through Imperm or Veiler because you get Link Karibu into the graveyard before you normal summon. Uh, Thrust is insane against Nibiru. And even if you don't get Nibiru, you can still set the Blackout last, which is pretty good. Uh, it's just, like, if you compare Board Breakers one-to-one -one with hand traps, hand traps also don't help you going first, right? Like, if you get stopped completely... Uh, having an impermanent veiler is not going to be that great because your opponent has access to charmers going second that you didn't have when you went first, right? And so, like, I, they can push through more hand traps than you can on average uh, when they go second because they have battle phase and uh, and charmers to their to like available, right? Um, and so, like, having cards like uh, I mean, I had enemy, I had droplet, which are solid to back up a board. I had Thrust and Talons to play through hand traps. I had Engage Hornet Drones to play through hand traps. So I didn't feel like the version was worse going first. My pattern for the mirror match pretty much would be I would side out all the monster hand traps. I wouldn't play into tactics, yeah. wouldn't play into like all of the call buys or whatever. And I'd side out the cross outs. I'd leave the impems in. I'd side in 15 cards going second in the mirror match. And then post side, you have 18 board breakers going second in the mirror. And if you draw any two card combination of these 18 cards, not only do you like beat their board, but 20 times out of 10, you'll OTK them. Um, That's the thing. That is just not true. Like, if you're playing against pure Snake Eye and this is your side-in, like, you say any two of these, you're going to kill them, that is, that is simply not true. Like, have fun OTKing, um, like, the Synchro setup with, uh, like, Mind Control Cosmic. This is f just for Fire King? Yeah, but who cares about Fire King, dude? Just play, like, anything. You, you beat Fire King, it's no problem. Like just 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 play like a functioning Yu-Gi-Oh deck and you you'll beat Fire King Snake Eye going second you know like whatever man it's Fire King Snake Eye dude just take your dub. These cards are so cracked in combination with each other like Mind Control Cosmic Cosmic Soul Release just like all of these cards in tandem uh, with six cards in your hand it's like so powerful they're so strong so um every mirror match I played against I won uh, in Vegas as well like these take control cards were busted uh, especially when people made Apple boards in Nevada so so essentially what you're saying is then you're citing this only against Fire King. Right? You're citing this only against Fire King and against Pure, you don't change your deck at all because you keep your hand traps in the main deck and you don't actually have anything that's good against Pure in your side deck? That just can't be right. Like, that just can't, that can't be correct. Like, that, it works against Fire King, I agree. Against Fire King, this works. You're going to win against Fire King. 
but against pure like not having anything in your side deck against pure that's just not ideal that can't be right uh yeah that's my take on the deck and uh yeah shout outs to all my friends and everyone who came up shout outs to uh Jonathan. <laughs> I'll side out some of the fire idiots and the cross outs for some takes. Yeah, okay. It's all right. I don't think it's ideal, though. It's it's something to be explored with. But at that point, unironically, I think it'd be better to just full commit to board breakers. Uh, and, and, and just, like, uh, build your main deck accordingly. Because, uh, yeah. But it's, 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 fun. It's, it's fun. It makes you think. I, I do like the side deck. I, 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 it's cool. It's a cool idea. Uh, if Fire King is inferior to the pure version, why do you think it won the YCS and tops around the same percentage? Uh, there's a couple reasons that go into it. First of all, I am I am joking around. The deck is still incredibly powerful. Uh, I it, I think I do think pure is better, but I think the difference between the two is very marginal. Uh, like we're talking at a very high level, right? It's like everything else is here, and then fire decks are here, but like. Fire King is like here, you know, and Pure is like here. Like they're still like both incredibly strong. Um, I I think in direct comparison, Pure is better than Fire King. Um, and I think the reason why people are playing a lot of Fire King is because they are. This is a format that we have basically copied from the OCG, right? The OCG format is, um, the the OCG format is. Uh, how should I, what should I, what should I say? Like, kind of like dominated by Fire King. And uh, that's what people started out with, I feel like. That was the initial impression. Everyone thought in the OCG, they play more Fire King, so Fire King must be better. So people started playing Fire King over here. They got more comfortable with Fire King. Uh, it's kind of like their, their, their pick because of that. Um, and like, I think the representation for it was a lot higher in the beginning, and it's gradually going down. It's gradually going down. We're not at the point where... Uh, pure snake eye has overtaken it by far like i think it was slightly more popular at ycs sydney but like in the beginning it was like everyone was playing fire king almost no one was playing pure then people slowly started realizing pure is actually really good and uh and it's kind of like we're starting to get into the situation where pure is going to be more popular soon um but um it's just like people have realized non-engine dominates this format non-engine dominates this format and the pure deck gets to play more non-engine and the the board that the decks make uh like the pure board is stronger um and it plays less bricks too because you play one jet synchron and that's it and uh that it's just like a more streamlined deck it's just i i think it's better in almost all uh aspects except for the fire king one is more fun <laughs> which maybe that's another reason why people just like it i i know it's sometimes hard to give up something you think is more fun for something else that you think is less fun um i i do think the fire king version is more fun um but yeah, I, I I don't know. It's uh it's interesting, but I do think that the uh, the pure deck is is superior. Uh, and I'm I'm saying that from my perspective when I'm playing against a fire deck, I'm always hoping it's fire king, uh, because it's just like it's better for me if it was, because I think I have better chances at beating fire king than pure. But yeah, um, but as a matter of fact, it's just like both decks are insanely good against rogue decks, right? Like, I don't think it matters. Uh, Fire King, maybe Fire King is a little bit better into rogue decks. I'm not sure, but I think they're both very similar. Like, it doesn't really matter. They're both tier zero. If you, if you like, I think they're both Snake Eye decks, so they both outperform everything else, right? And I think, yeah. Here in Solo's Rogue, yeah, maybe it's better into Rogue. I didn't feel like uh, Snake Eye Pure had a big problem into Rogue, because it's just like most rogue decks... You just throw a bunch of hand traps at them, and then you're just going to be fine. But, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, that was the fire decks from YCS Sydney. Let's look at some more interesting stuff from YCS Sydney that uh, topped over there. Because we had some... Okay, you guys have been begging me to watch the shark deck profile. We can watch it. However, I'll, I'll say that I won't know what any of the cards do, so... You know, uh, the, the shark deck topped uh, YCS Sydney, and uh, I am either happy for you or sorry that happened. I don't know. Yo, okay. Uh, top nine after Swiss and top 32 cut uh, at the YCS Sydney, and you were playing... Uh, sharks, just pure...
So they're saying pure sharks. Uh, how many floodgates does this mean? Are we talking nine floodgates, 12? What does this mean? Frank for sharks. Love to see it, brother. Um, let's not waste any time. Let's jump straight to the profile and see the goo. Okay. Can we not jump scare me with sounds every two seconds? Baits out Baylor. So yeah, great stuff. Um, if you have an extender, you've got place for days. But if you're if this is your only normal summon, it's going to be hard to get through. But yeah, that's why you play a lot of extenders. Um, God card, XYZ Remora. This card makes you set up your rank 4 plays for days. Keeps uh, detaching materials from your XYZ monsters and keeps bringing them back. And here's the great part. I don't know you don't what need any to of detach it from one monster. You can detach from multiple XYZ monsters um, to bring back. So if you have a Bahamut with one shot and you got a Kraken with one material, uh, you can detach both and special summon. Now, uh, when it's summoned, um, you can also trigger it to summon uh, target two fish in grave, uh, special summon them, uh, level four fish. And so that's how you get some rank four plays going. Uh, then you can go into another Bahamut. If you have extender, you can go into a Abyss Dweller and that ruins every Snake Eyes player's Ooh. day. So make sure you ruin their day. Oh my God, that's unreal. <laughs> uh, to get some plays going, we need uh, to set up a play to put a water monster on, on board. Uh, this is Tenny Spirit Shathana. Um, usually play three, I uh, opted to play two. Uh, I actually made this deck uh, with 30 minutes to go to registration. I didn't have a deck uh, at 6.30 p.m. I made this uh, between 6.30 and 7 p.m. and submitted it uh, before day one. So yeah, very Imagine good. If you had now. Yeah, exactly. Imagine if I had now, you know, never know. But um, also, yeah, uh, day one went undefeated, uh, went X01. Yeah, so very good. Um, and uh, yeah, perfect, perfect card. Uh, we played the two Silent Sea Nettles. Wish this card was a fish. Konami need to errata it to make it a fish because this card is crazy. Um, this is an extender. It makes it so you recycle um, and it makes you so that you can actually get a rank four play going. Um, of course, you play the two Silent Anglers. Uh, usually you play three, but uh, opted to go two because sometimes it can feel like a brick in the deck. Um, you can summon it off of White Mirror to bring back to make an instant rank four. You can summon it off of Buzzsaw Shark to make your rank four play. Um, and it's a good extender at the end. Uh, just got to remember that once you summon it, you can't trigger any, uh, or special summon any um, monster effects in hand. So yeah, always do this last. Uh, the one brick in the deck, there are many bricks, but uh, this one's the brickiest. <laughs> Bro, uh, I don't know, man. This... To me, all of this looks like bricks so far, but I, I don't know what they do, so... Uh, uh. Twice in uh, top 32. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you never want to see it in your hand. You always want to summon it off Buzzsaw. There, okay, that description is true for every single card so far, but... Or send it off Foolish to Special Summon. Uh, makes it so your monster can't be destroyed by battle. Uh, so it protects the uh, Bahamut if it stays. Usually it doesn't really matter, but it does come up in some circumstances. Uh, we played the one lifeless uh, leaf fish. Uh, this is to send also the right hand shark uh, or the crystal shark. Um, also, if you have white mirror in your opening hand, you can send buzzsaw and get some plays. You can uh, special summon with white mirror to add. This deck is my worst enemy in card guesser, by the way, because like I, I always know it's a shark or some fish. I never know which one. Buzzsaw and special buzzsaw and then target lifeless to make sure that you don't get a ghost ogre or anything like that um, to keep uh, the lifeless and buzzsaw on, on the field and put like a right hand or XYZ remora on the board. Uh, then we played three Vis Sharks. Very good card. Um, I know this card is good in theory. Best extend in the deck. Uh, pretty much if you control all water monsters, um, you can uh, special summon this card and add any level three, four, um, five fish water monster from your deck to your hand. Usually you add XYZ Remora. Um, also, the first time a number monster would be uh, do damage uh, to a opponent's monster, it's doubled, uh, which comes up in some circumstances. And then also it can be used as a rank three or four for a number monster which is very good in the extra uh, the card you usually search is crystal shark or sends off um this card can trigger in hand to special summon itself if you control water can be used as a rank three or four of a number monster very good uh, of course the one game seal we played this because we played the foolish uh, and ice barrier uh, engine um pretty much you can uh send off game seal uh for the players that play boss monsters um like uh the skull guardian or okay. the purely players, you can send it up Ice Barrier and then um, Ice Barrier can banish to send Game Seal. And then you can instantly, if they don't have a response, you can instantly add the Game Seal back uh, to your hand. And then you can Game Seal them, their boss monster, which Reoccurring is very good. Kaiju. Crazy, That's crazy. unreal. And the reason why this I'll is the craziest, like, this is just uh, a gold rank Master Duel deck, isn't it? So you can trigger Crystal Shark. Crystal Shark just needs a Water Monster on board, so you can target Zealand. Isn't this just literally the one? It just doesn't it just spam like maybe like it spams Bahama Shark Toad, Abyss Dweller, or uh, like the if you have like a floodgate like goes in match, you can like make the rank four that makes your opponent's monsters waters, right? I feel like I've played against this in Master Duel before.
Enters all the game seal you give them um, and make sure that it halves the attack and special summons itself. So you don't actually need a water monster on your board, you can use a water monster on their board. That's crazy. And then, of course, we play uh, three Ash. Uh, sided this out against every Snake Eyes player, just because um, you don't want to let them use uh, yep. Ash, of course. But it's it's too good. You need to verse it in the branded mirror. You need to verse it against all the rogue decks. Yep. Um, feet not forehead. Yeah, feet not forehead. You know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, pretty much, um, yeah, you just need it against all the rogue matchups. But against uh, Fire Kings or Snake Eyes Fire Kings, um, not very good. Um, uh, yeah, I wish. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one. But yeah, sided out every time um, for better side cards. Um, and then of course you got to play the three nib uh, nib just best card in the hand trap in the format um, yeah so you pretty much just make sure that uh, you summon five summon special summon itself um, you need this at the end of the snake eye uh, combos um, and in some cases the horus decks you can oh the raid raptor decks that uh, the rogue deck matchups um, it's it's god tier so yeah got to play it uh, it does coincide with the bish shark but you can do it uh, if your nib token is big enough you can actually otk um, if you summon a nib token to their side of the field um, then you get Buzzsaw or uh, Extender and a Normal. Uh, make the Kraken. Kraken can pop the um, token. The token will uh, just be destroyed and Kraken will inflict damage equal to the attack it had on the field, not the original attack. So you can actually burn them for like, uh, if it's a 4k monster or a 6k oh monster, it'll do 3k damage. So then you can just try and set up an Extender and OTK or you can just attack into with Nib. Uh, um, or end the, end the Kraken to do 4900 damage, which is very good. That's very crazy. Good. Um, so yeah, that's it? it for the monsters. I'll go straight in with the spells. Um, so yeah, the, what makes it get going is the uh, droplets. So yeah, we opted to not play too much hand traps. Uh, just the three Ash, three Nib. No Imperms, no Drolls, no Veilers, no Ghost Mourners. Um, droplet makes it uh, very good against the Snake Eyes uh, matchup, uh, in which uh, there's a choke point uh, where they summon uh, IP Mascarena. Yep. Uh, and usually the end board is Flame Burge, um, the IP Mascarena in the Spell and Trap Zone, and the uh, Appaloosa uh, over here. Um, and then maybe a Link Rebo and such. Uh, Droplet makes it so that uh, if they trigger the IP Mascarena, uh, usually they need to trigger it to summon out the um, uh, SP Lil Knight by using Flame Burge and IP uh, to go to the grave to trigger Flame Burge to summon out two level ones. Uh, this makes it so you can negate the uh, Appaloosa and the IP and it leaves the Flame Burge on board, um, which you can steal uh, as a material for a rank seven Batman uh, XYZ. Um, so yeah, very good card. Um, makes it so Flame Burge won't trigger and uh, make sure that you can try an OTK on that turn. Okay. Uh, of course, you got to play Talents, uh, hand trap format. You got to play it. Uh, there was a game um, where in which I got nibbed uh, at the end of the combo. Did Talents, um, got into XYZ Remora, uh, did a normal summon or white mirrored into a buzzsaw. Set up the play again. Ended up with um, the uh, Joella, Kraken, Bahamut Shark, and Toad, which is very good. So yeah, crazy. And then of course you play the white mirror. Um, card is a great extender for. Of course. Uh, uh, fish decks uh, lets you special one and then optionally add a what monster monster a a monster with the same name yep. uh, from your deck so you can summon uh silent angle add silent angle you can summon buzzsaw add buzzsaw uh usually you can go into xyz remora and uh, add the xyz remora from your deck very good card um yeah so nothing to say about that i uh, played the one call by you got a uh, then I played the Foolish Engine, so three Foolish Burial uh, yep. of Goods. Uh, this is to send the, um, you know, the best card in the quarter century pack, Ice Barrier. So yeah, <laughs> you'll see it coming up. Uh, it, it goes hard. Uh, you played the one Foolish, yep. uh, you send it, um, you send Crystal Shark or um, Right Hand Shark to the Graveyard. Or if you open with White Mirror, um, you can actually send Buzzsaw or something to get some plays going with the White Mirror too. Okay. Uh, special White Mirror, uh, Buzzsaw and, and add a Buzzsaw. And then you play the one, another brick, Armored Xyz. You're going to see a lot of bricks in the deck, but don't worry. Oh, yeah. You've got to play it out to test it out first, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, Armored Xyz makes it so you can try an OTK. Uh, once you put Batman on board, um, Armored Xyz can actually uh, activate to uh, e equip one monster from your graveyard, an XYZ to a monster. Any monster doesn't need, uh, it just needs to be face up. And then you can trigger your um, your Batman, the rank seven, to actually steal uh, your opponent's flame burges and such. Very good. And then we play God card, Ice Barrier. Yeah, this card. Such a good card in some circumstances. Uh, Fyra Jackal, thank you for the 12 months. Appreciate you. Uh, Zucchini NJ, thank you for the five. And Caffeinated Curly, thank you for the six months. Will you play any non-German opens or are you not traveling for one day events internationally? I won't be, I won't be playing a, an open. Uh, that isn't the German Open this this season. No, uh, it's like I maybe would if I needed the points, but I don't. So, no, oh. no. Oh. Um, it comes up. Uh, you send it off a of foolish or droplets, um, and it's so it's very good. You send. I'm still waiting. Like this guy's explaining a lot, but the one thing I don't understand yet is how did we make top thirty two? How big was this YCS? First of all, can someone put this into context for me? 
How many people did you have? I, did, I don't actually know. 900-ish? Okay. Any level 5 or higher water monster to the graveyard? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't want to be... Uh, I don't want to sound too negative. And I don't remember what every single card in the deck does. I know what they roughly do. I, I, I know what they roughly do. I do kind of understand what the deck is trying to do. But that, I feel like um, that guy must have had a crazy day to make top cut with this deck. Like, it's, it's, not like, it's not like a terrible deck that doesn't even function. It does function. I do, I know, I, I do understand what it tries to do. But how does it win with that? Like, we must have just been able to go first against Snake Eye and, like, dweller them every time, I feel like. I feel like there's no other way we could be winning that. Um, and then you can add any water monster from your grave to your hand. Or, so, like, goes um, in all in one effect, uh, and in some circumstances, if you have, like, like a, the a buzzsaw in grave, um, you can, and you can send Crystal Shark and add the buzzsaw back to your hand, very good. Or, like I said, when you're versing in the rogue matchups, you verse uh, purely or uh, even the voiceless voice where they put purely. it, you can send Game Seal and add Game Seal. And, um, yeah, usually they don't see it coming, so you just drop Game Seal on top of them, uh, their boss monster. Very good. Um, and then, of course, uh, we played the uh, God card, Gozen match. Um, there's a certain aspect of control in the deck, and it's only when you have control. Gozen, uh, you put up the Stealth Kraken lock. Uh, you put out a Stealth Kraken, you put up the Gozen. Gozen makes it so the monsters are all on the field become water, and your opponent can only special summon water monsters. Or even, they can't even attempt to summon anything else. It has to be water. Um, so, yeah, pretty much... Uh, linked with Kraken, it becomes like a, a win con straight off the bat. It's unreal. And then um, you play the other brick in the deck, the full armored XCs. This card makes it yeah. so that uh, uh, if you're scared of Nib, you can uh, leave two bodies on board with a rank four, um, and then, or possibly uh, rank up in your opponent's turn. Um, if you're not water locked, uh, which uh, half the deck usually does, but um, if you're not water locked, you can also do a funny play in which um, if you have an XC's monster that your opponent battles, or if their opponent summons an XYZ and battles, um, you can actually, if you have XC's on board, you can activate this card to summon Zeus on their turn uh, in the battle phase, and you can board wipe. Crazy. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, you can funny. board wipe on your opponent's battle phase with this card, summoning out a Zeus with two materials. Very good. Um, so yeah, that's all the spell and traps. Um, I'll go on with the goo into the extra deck. Um, so we got to go uh, and mention the bloody... Uh, flex spot, the Ragnar Zero. So yeah, this card is bonkers. Um, every deck has a way of increasing or decreasing the attack. Um, so you can actually destroy an attack position monster uh, and gain um, a draw card. Um, so pretty much you use this over you use this over Typhon. Uh, it's also a number monster and it's a water rank four. So you can go into um, uh, with the Crystal Shark and Abyss Shark into. I like how excited he is about his deck, though. It makes me happy to see him enjoying it. Oh no, absolutely. The energy in this profile is 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 cool, and I don't want to. I don't want to, um, like, uh, I think it's very cool that they made it. Um, I'm just looking at it from a competitive perspective, right? Like, I, I, I do think it's great that they, that they made it and with one of their, uh, I'm assuming, like, one of their pet decks, right? And have the ability to top cut the YCS. I think it's very cool, very wholesome. Um, I still don't understand, like, how, <laughs> you know? this guy which is very good um so we played the one dweller um snake snake eyes players cry when they see this um uh, pretty much it didn't come up much at all uh, but when it did it was god tier uh just because like it's like the cherry on top you end their turn instantly um then we play the uh xc's armor fortress this guy is very good it searches out the two bricks in the deck um you, if you play it smart and you open up one of the bricks you can try and make him with one material and uh, detach and search the other one um then you set up the plays with uh, full armored. So this guy is just to rank up into this guy if it has no material. Um, it can negate all the face-up monsters on your opponent's side of the field and gains 500 attack. So very good, and it can detach a material to stay protected. Um, usually you just use him so you can rank up into Batman. Um, Batman's the rank seven. Uh, that's very good, it gains 300 attack. And if a monster on either player's of the field uh, becomes equipped, um, you can actually steal any monster your opponent controls. Uh, it does not target. Um, and it also is very uh, against 300 attack for each one. So um, this card linked with the trap makes it very strong on your opponent's turn uh, to steal uh, their low or their voiceless uh, Skull Guardian and such, or even um, uh, their Flame Burge and such. Yeah, so very good. Literally um, Batman. We yeah, love literally it. Batman. And um, the reason why is you can XYZ over this, uh, then you link uh, XYZ over that, and then you XYZ into this, and you can also target an XE's card. So you can target any of the armored XE's or even XYZ Remora in your grave, add it back to the hand, detach the two materials to summon XYZ Remora, and if you have two fish in uh, grave, you can actually special summon two more fish and go into more rank four plays. So yeah, very good. Uh, God, 
uh, the boss monster of the deck, Toad. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course, nothing can be said. This card is bonkers. Yeah, recycles like no one's business. Can use it up to three times per turn, just uh, adding, adding, adding. Um, and then you can equip it into the spell trap zone. It doesn't matter how it goes to the grave, even as a uh, equip spell. Um, it can add a water monster from your graveyard to your hand. So you can also use it to recycle the XYZs uh, in your grave. Uh, two Bahamut just to summon out the Toad. Yep. Uh, one, another flex spot, uh, number one on one Silent Honor Arc. Rank four, water, steals your Dude. opponent's monster. So if they have Mirror Jade or something, that's how you protect If you freaking, <laughs> if you Silent Honor Arc a Flamberish Dragon, that'd be so funny, man. That's so funny. If you, if you Honor Arc a Flamberish is so funny. Uh, yourself from being ward wiped. Um, so Mirror Jade, it steals a Mirror Jade. Uh, and then you can attack, declare an attack uh, pretty much overlay if you want to Zeus. So very good. It's so um, funny because no uh, one plays around this anymore. Like in 2014, or 2013, you would actually play around this card because, like, it was relevant back then. You would summon, like, important monsters in defense to play around it. Nowadays, obviously, you don't anymore. It's it's very funny if it happens. The control side of the deck, Kraken, very good card. Makes all monsters on field Dude, water. Don't so, call it uh, control. Snake players need their monsters to be fire on board. Uh, so it makes it so they're all water. And also, their uh, little bodies can no longer get the 1100 attack because they're no longer fire. Uh, princes can't pop any monsters on their field uh, to special summon itself. So, yeah, it stops all that. That's unreal. And then um, two Kraken Spawns. So this guy, uh, when destroyed by Battle of Cardback, can summon out the Kraken Spawns. Um, this guy, when destroyed by Battle of Cardback, uh, can summon back the uh, Stealth Kraken from the graveyard and attach material. Uh, here's the funny part. Um, this can also destroy water monsters. So they have quick effects that destroy water monsters. This one does damage. So if, if there's any situation in um, which you're on time, uh, you can also burn um, through the Nip tokens or OTK through uh, burning tokens or their boss monsters and stuff. Very good. And then, of course, the uh, one Zeus. Uh, Zeus is a good card. Yeah, um, if you're not Warlock, it's very good. And like I said, with the trap play, you can summon Zeus in defense on your opponent's turn over XYZ you control if it battles and board wipe the whole board. So yeah, very good. Uh, so yeah, that's all the extra, that's the extra deck. It's crazy, crazy stuff to see, my guy. I know, I know, right? And then, <laughs> of course, um, the side deck. Uh, so yeah, your side, um, three draw, yep. good card. It uh, comes up in the rogue matchups, or uh, I'm not too sure about the Snake Eyes matchups, but in the rogue matchups, um, it just makes sure that you don't, you don't fall behind. Yeah. Um, then you play the uh, you play two thrust. Um, everyone's trying to trigger something in standby um, or, or main instantly. So this is just to get out um, other cards that uh, go hard or one ofs that go hard against every deck. So uh, one of them is soul release. You play snake eyes. Yeah. You can soul release. Finish off all their uh, poplars, uh, all their oaks or ashes in grave. Uh, or the ashes in grave. Uh, makes it so the flame birch can't summon anything from the graveyard. Very good card. Uh, the one half is for the trap matchups. Uh, two cosmics. Uh, just because um, you need this because uh, a lot of decks are maining. Uh, are not maining. Um, they're siding in anti spell and summon limit. Uh, that's their new god card. So you got to play this uh, in to actually play yeah, the game. So, the back row. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and then you play three evenly. This is the yeah. best card for uh, Thrust. Um, it pretty much board wipes the, the Snake Eyes uh, and Viking combos, the Kashtiro players. Yeah, yeah, they hate this card. Um, but yeah, very good card to get to get you on level terms um, and uh, start your combos. So yeah. Uh, and then of course, three anti-spell. You got to play it. Uh, you got to play one of these. Um, this is to help you going first, um, just in case there were actual players playing. All right. Hey, I mean, I can't... I, I, if you want me to explain to you how this happened, uh, I can't. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. It's uh, I like how passionate they are about their deck, and honestly, I am uh, I'm happy they uh, they topped for them. You know, it's it's pretty cool to see someone top with uh, with a passionate deck like that. Uh, from a competitive perspective, I have no explanation. <laughs> I have no explanation. Try the deck. Maybe it works out for you. I I I I don't know how it would, but uh, hey, here we are. <laughs> it's cool. All right. Water beats fire? Maybe it's as simple as that. Maybe water does beat fire. Maybe you're onto something. Maybe you're onto something. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have... You know what? I, I want to look at the Salamangrate one next, if I can find it. Hold up. Uh, YCS Sydney Salamangrate. Uh, this is from, <laughs> I, I opened this one very confidently right now, and it's from four years ago, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, there we go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Nolan TCG, and we are here with a deck profile with Josh. Hello. And, uh, what did you just do? We're here for a deck profile with Josh, with Josh. So, I topped another YCS with a very good deck. It's almost like we've had this conversation five years ago, yeah, and we're back. Except because last time I had top 16. You are, you topped with Salad. Yeah, you top 32. Top, top 32 this time, not top 16, okay. but same deck. Four years later? Five years oh, later. 2020, we last had this conversation. Yeah, it's about right. Four years later. I guess COVID's coming back, oh, since you brought it last time. Oh, okay. All right, Take let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, it's 22 minutes. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Gazelle at three. Thank God. God's very good. Now I don't have to constantly search it and get drolled or ashed. 
I, I get Roll Thresh anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Spinny, your best extend off. It's a free summons, level 3 Castalia. Search for a debug, circle. Chat, what do you think? At which timestamp does it become apparent that it's not 2019 anymore? My guess is 2 minute 15. We'll sign up money. Send all of this. Bandits itself, doesn't matter. We play charge, so we can get it back anyways. And it's a uh, boost attack comes in handy because charge awesome is a pop. All right. That are all three offs for salad. We just play one offs now. Weasel. Ah, I forgot about Weasel. Right. Amazing card. Probably the best card in salad right now. Play around near the make Baron. Yep. Uh, you have combos where you make wicked, search for this, then you hold it in hand until you use Raging Phoenix. Then you can search charge or will. And then you summon this, because if they nib there, you will, you summon one back, then you trigger Weasel to summon to their field, which gets you a draw, and then you trigger Promethean and Raging Phoenix, and you get two materials back. Very nice. And you can also just use it to trigger Promethean to just pop cards your opponent controls. Play Foxy. Summon Limit is a really cringe card. I hate that card. This card's very good. This got you in the top 32, didn't it? This out of cash? Yes. Yep. I had Cosmic, but this, this, this definitely am added. I heard complaints that Foxy removes and was like, oh, Josh won. Yeah. Uh, he bailed it up. Okay. Cosmic. It's a really good card though. It's a good extend off. Like you should never play Salad without this card. Even if it's at one. Like I wouldn't play it more because it's also not very good. But it's just it's a decent extend off. <laughs> it's very good. On field. But it's not very good. Uh, next, January so play one. one. Also, you can't run the deck without it. It's recursion. It's a summon back. It's just so much for the deck. Level four for your rank fours. Uh, piercing comes up not very So often, true, honestly. But it's always it's even good to open. Because sign up mining it off, you can boxy it off. It's your it's a good normal summon as well. Because uh, Sphinny can send itself. It's only like kind of okay when you open up with a debug. Because that's like, eh. But it's fine. Uh, good card. Very good card. Uh, Tiger. No one runs this. Tiger? Card, but I do. Especially yeah, in this How much did this come up on the weekend? Quite a lot, actually. Uh, it's level modulation for playing around Nibiru, where there's a combo where you open a way to this debug, Gazelle. And that is a full combo through Baron, which gets you uh, Baron Dweller, SP, Raging Phoenix. And you have Baron before on summon four. Okay. But this is also good for just getting your rank fours, playing it when you have Will in mid game, and then just spamming Baron and Dweller or Bogusko inside. Very good card overall. It's also your me replacement since you stop running that. Okay. Yeah, because discard summon uh, has a useless effect. Also, level modulation once per turn soft. You can do this as much as you want as long as you can summon it back. Okay. And that's how so you, uh, you make Baron bring it back, modulate it down, make it XEs. Exactly. Yeah. Alright, that's all the salads. Now we'll do the Cypress package. Triple debug. Debug? People playing fire? I don't know why. That card is straight ass. Flame Buffalo? No. Salamanca to fire. Ah, oh, okay. Never play that card. We do not have Code Source. You cannot make. you. The problem with Salad to fire, you cannot make enough interruptions on your end board for it to be viable. Yeah. Because all you're doing is you're summoning Promethean. You maybe use Sprint to send EMP, and then you have Raw and Rage. That's not enough compared to a Baron, a Dweller, an SP, a Raw, and Promethean and Grave with maybe EMP access. Yeah. Like, you just play this. It doesn't lock you into anything. Damn, it doesn't exist. Like, so that is true. Uh, amazing card. Plays around everything. Meow uh, mine. There's a link on field, some from the hand, and it can be used to just link off when you have uh, Wicked. The if thing is, second, you I, I do think it's kind of unfortunate that, like, Promethean Princess is only really being seen as a Snake Eye card for the most part because it does buff other decks a great deal as well, like this one, right? Like, it, Promethean Princess is just a phenomenal card in general, not just in, like, Snake Eye decks, right? It's just Snake Eye is so much better in other stuff that decks like this one don't really get to shine. Like, if, if Snake Eyes didn't exist, maybe there would be a, a room for these kind of decks, right? But, like, um, yeah. You make Promethean? Bounce card they control. I mean, people that play Salamangrid are aware that Promethean Princess helps them, right? It's good in the deck, uh, of course, but it's just like the decks, these kind of decks should maybe, or like would be getting more recognition if there wasn't like a clear best fire deck is what I'm trying to say, right? That's what I, that's what I mean, right? Because like people are, people are uh, completely like uh, shocked by the fact that Salamangrid made top cut when the reality is like Promethean Princess is a hell of a card. Him on that. Okay, cool. Summon Weasel, link off, trigger Weasel, summon to their field, summon Promethean. Then I can use Promethean effect. This is a very good card. Like, it's so amazing. The deck got so much in Phantom Nightmare. But it just. What it got in Phantom Nightmare helps utilize what it got in Soul Burning Volcano. Because the cards were good. Not that good. These the, cards are very good. The year of fire continues, even with dark cards sometimes. Yippee! Uh, Ixie, this was questionable. It is a very good card. I'd still probably run it. 
but there are times because I'm running Tiger and not Falco where people Hate just Baron crash Luke my lane. Uh, why would you not just run pure rank four? Why would you not, why would you just cut Baron and pull the Goose instead of Scythe so you can have one more? I don't think it really matters. I use Exceed as an extender just for the combo, not for the rank fours. I don't think uh, once today I was able to just leave an Exceed on board and just combo without it so I can use it later. Like I just did the combo anyways because I just had Jaguar and Tiger. It was fine. Like it's a really good extender. Because it makes your opponent true through so many cards. And then by the end of it, you just summon Weasel from hand and you're comboing anyways. I nearly did that to Koda, who beat me in top 32. This was uh, in uh, Swiss. But he had Nibiru after troll hashing me. And, you know, after going full combo when I stopped. But you know what? Did you play him in Swiss and in top 32? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, it was game on game two, one each. Uh, uh, I actually cross out me. Uh, he went full combo, but I nibbed at a point where he just couldn't extend further. He had open hand, three mystery cards. Uh, Sign of Mining, Ash. I'm like, cool. Uh, normal Foxy, Search Sanctuary, Droll, like, this is still game. Combo, combo, res, I'm like, oh, please don't do this to me, <laughs> Code I. And then never, I'm just like, you know what, you got it. And Sometimes then, uh, you have all the guns. I misplayed and, you know, Code I is just a really good player. Love that guy. Uh, only Japanese in top card. Uh, Ash, amazing. Best hand trap in the format, by far. This card is so fucking cracked. Uh, also, add a back sun level. It's like, you don't usually do what you do with Salad, like, years ago, where you just grind them out. But it's always there. So you can get your opponent in a position where they're just like on mineral resources, you can just go. Just loop it back, sun level every time. Fuck the combo. I'm just gonna go summon sun level now. Would I the go, yeah. Rage. And it's just like, I have that every single turn. You are not winning this game, no matter how many turns it takes. And if you stall, well, I hate you. Uh, anyways, uh, Valor, again, really good this format, especially because Snake Eyes, just doing this on Ash. All right. And you can use I'll be less sad. Uh, that's, that's a lie. I hate this card. Uh, so I like, at this point, I'd like to point out that Josh has been saying for the last three months that Code of Soul was going to be in the last set. It should have been. I don't know why. It was a fire set, and Code of Soul it, was a fire that was horse Will. Uh, go f raging. Because you wanted to. Like, Will's. Uh, back to Will. Will's just crazy. Like, there's been so many times through this. No, well, Facebook, because they're bad. Yeah, they all yeah, said I, I mean burning, that. Burning drawer instead. Mm. The Discord's where it at. Don't join uh, Kevin Cancel's Discord. That's, that's bad. Uh, man's, man's throwing shots. <laughs> He always oh, yeah. goes, in my opinion, when he talks about Salad, because I told him, the problem isn't your skill, the problem is your budget. You won't buy SP, so you can't play the better deck. So, but on the Discord, I introduced this card. Eh, I was a guy who used it before, but I mainly just, like, shouted this card out, because this card is crazy. Because, alright, first of all, <clears throat> it's a reborn, so you target three in Grave, or Vanish, shuffle two back, summon one, and then negate its effects. If they Didico called by your monsters, you can just do this to summon back your Promethean, so you have a way to get it back, no matter what. And also, it's a Salad, so it's searchable by Raging, Sunlight Wolf through Gazelle, crazy. Obviously, you can set it. Promethean will trigger this effect because uh, after you pop your card, Raging Phoenix, summon back, gain attack. Oh wait, there's a monster that has different from its original attack, so you have a free pop on the field. I genuinely I do think much. Salad is a is a capable deck at the moment. It's literally overshadowed by better fire decks, but like I th I think this is like it's a it's all it's all right. Like uh, it doesn't feel bad to me. It's not obviously not the best deck in the format, but it's like it, it's 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 all right. But I did it. I did quite a bit. Amazing card. You don't have to play it, I highly recommend it, but not if you're playing Exceed. My build's a bit psycho. Uh, circle, mining. Not to say. Okay. Don't play Fire Recovery over this. You're bad at the game, please. I, it's uh, so bad. Opinions on Burning Draw. I mean, people go to tournaments at the moment with like Marincess or um, whatever else there is, uh, you know, Centurion, uh, those kind of decks. People are aware that those decks are somewhat viable, right? But I feel like no one really talks about this deck as much. I feel like it's on a similar level. Like, it's like a playable rogue deck. You know? So I, I don't know why it's like, it's not that unusual that someone made top cut with it or like that. Like, you know, it's like, it's all right. I say no because it locks you to fire. Burning draw is the worst card. Oh, it's a great card. Your opponent has to have a monster and then you have to actually use this card. You have to draw it. You're never going to search it because that's just an egg. Because if they have Ash, you've just lost the game. Just don't play Burning Draw. Just play uh, the... Don't play anything that locks you into fire, like Salad of Fire or Burning Crawl. The deck is so much better when you have access to everything. Uh, traps, uh, info, good card. It's always gonna be good. Good card, self-explanatory right there. You have missed the, the deck profile. Yeah, it's gonna be up on the YouTube channel soon though. So don't worry, you won't, you'll, you'll be able to see it. One rule, uh, Rage is inside, because Rage is a really bad main deck card, which is also why I play Charge, because Charge is also a pop. Okay, I do I card. do agree with this because like their uh, their idea is we're not we're not locking ourselves into fires with Salamangra to fire. Uh we're actually making like extra deck monsters, you know, Baron SP. So we're just we're just using a roar next to that. That that makes sense. And the utility gun second card. At the end of the day you don't want to break on the traps. Exactly. Uh this is just always good. Sign of mining, set it back. Just the ability to set itself back is what makes it so crazy. Yeah. All right, we have looked the at the new there. cards already, uh, yeah. Um, never mind. Yes. Extra deck. Yes. yes. Um, I don't know. Uh three bailings. Always run three bailings. If you run two bailings, you're just gonna have a hard time throughout the day. 
trying to just manage your resources well, even if you play charge. It's not worth to try and play around it and play two. Just play three. Last time you told you played two. Huh? Yeah, I was a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> the deck was a lot simpler back then, but it's too complicated now. Uh, two Sunlight Wolf. Uh, Self-explanatory in the new list, like, you'll never run three of this. The extra deck is really tight, but you always want to use its effect. Because again, amazing grind games, add back wheel, add back charge, add back any spell trap. Always good. Just, you can just blow out your opponent when they just can't get resources. One, uh, my other fire links. Actually, we'll do Raging first, because that's selling every card. Uh, Raging. Re! So fucking good. I hate This card is very good. Fire King plays it. Uh, Snake Eye plays it. Because this card is like $60. Why is the Salamander card $60? It's okay, you can buy booster boxes and set it in for nothing, so it's fine. I hate it. Uh, okay. Uh, so, search effect, amazing to get. Uh, if your opponent Nibiru's you, after you summon one, when you have Weasel in hand, and you just use Promethean, they're idiots. Because you just go Weasel effect, summon to their field, Promethean trigger, and this will just summon it back, and you can relink anyways. And it also being able to just crash into your opponent's big monsters, summon the other back. This is on 56. There's not much of that has more attack than this, at 56. Uh, and then it just plays around. 60? Yeah, this card, card, card got like, really oh, expensive. This card got really expensive because the set was not opened that much, I think. Uh, like, it, 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 it's not a very good set overall. No one cared for this when it came out, and then suddenly you needed it for, uh, for, for Snake Eyes. So, like, uh, it, it went up quite a bit. I don't know if it's 60 bucks in Europe as well. I mean, we can check. Uh, but but I, I, it's, it's, it's expensive. I know that. I, I know that. And I, I actually got lucky. I was lucky because I had it. Because I played Salad at Locals once after the thing came out. But yeah, it's not it's not 60 bucks for us. It's like 30. It's like 30-ish. Uh oh six that's the Australian currency. Okay. I don't, I don't know what the conversion rate for that would be. I don't know what the equivalent for it is, but it's like it's it's a solid 30 bucks for us as well. Like it it's it's a lot for a Salamangrate Ultra Rare. You can't have all things. I can, it's salad. Uh but yeah. You can play it too if you want. But three is just so much easier, and your opponent never expects a third. Uh, but it just makes the deck so much more consistent yeah. into the grind game and everything else. Uh, Fire links that I play, heat off. Oh, Amazing yes. this format. Yes. Don't play the, just play this card. It's so good. Don't play the deck without it. Promethean. People, some people were so confused, like, wow, he's playing this card. It's a fire deck, of course I am. Yeah. This card is broken, and I have a combo that is just better than yours. Can you make Baron Dweller SP? No. And I also get Will and Gazelle in hand. That's fine. Uh, not many people play this card. The Facebook seems to just hate this card. I don't know why. Best card in the deck. Best card in the extra deck, sorry. Uh, searching Weasel. Doubt. Or Tiger. Well, Tiger's also a second search for this, which can come up sometimes. But searching Weasel with this is just so broken. It's a plus one, and you still get to Promethean anyways. There's no reason not to run this. Like the Salad of Fire build, you have to search it with Salad of Fire in the combo. Terrible. Like, just don't play that deck. Uh, SP. This is what cuts off most people from this build. You have... You don't have to. But you really should. Because this card is insane. It's an interruption, and when you're going second, it can break boards going first. What? No. Uh, yeah, the break boards going second too, uh, depending on if you go first or second. But it's just so crazy. Uh, and then EMP will trigger off its banish effect. Uh, you can use this effect if you don't use Dalio to. But remember, SP Little Knight is a worse card than Cyber's Wicket, according to. You banish know? this and banish the Baron, so you can keep both. Of them. We're being very annoying oh, right or now. <laughs> if you don't have Charger Will set, oh, you can't bring it back. Just such a really good card. It's a very. Uh... It's a, it's a little shame because the deck profile is very like slap down every card and be like yeah you got to play it it's insane you know uh, deck is crazy this card is crazy this card is so good you you need to play it there's very little like the, the, the it's 23 minutes and there's very little actual explanation going on which I feel like is what would need to happen if you're showing a Salamangre deck profile in 2024 you know that doesn't mean it's bad it's just I don't I don't know the explanation doesn't give me as much you know. And then you can also just link it off for Promethean if you want to get rid of your opponent's set card, which is probably an impone. Oh, yeah. Just amazing. Not worth the price, but still good. Yeah. Is that a Felix? Hmm? Like, the, 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 the deck might be very good, but I don't think they're doing it a lot, very like justice by just slapping down every card and telling me it's the best card ever printed. Because at that point, I feel like we're definitely over... We're definitely like exaggerating. You know, like, just, just show me the deck. Tell me about its strength in the current format. Tell me about its weaknesses. Tell me about the job that individual cards have. And like, in, instead of just showing every card and being like, yeah, deck is crazy. Deck ends on SP Dweller, um, Raging Phoenix Roar every time, which I, I don't think it does that, you know? I think we're, we're exaggerating here because we really like the deck, which is okay, but it's not ideal for a 22-minute deck profile for it to just be like... Yeah, this card's crazy. This card's crazy. You gotta play it. You gotta play it. Trust, trust. This deck beats every matchup. Felix, that's it. Just not the room for Zelantis. No, I was playing Zelantis before, but I'm just like, 
it's not worth it. It's for the OTK line, but my ceiling's kind of low. I can make Baron SP. That's what they told me in the Discord. I'm like, I'll test it out. They were right. The ceiling before was just uh, Baron SP raw. I'm like, that's good. But what about when I have more extenders in hand? I'm still only on Baron SP raw and like whatever you have in grave. But, eh. Ceiling just isn't that good in my opinion. In this deck. Okay. Uh, Stalio, amazing. You're always going to play this card even when uh, you play Force Prince with Code of Soul. The extra deck gets even tighter when Code of Soul comes out. I'm going to struggle with for that. Playing this instead of Zealantis. Amazing card. Uh, you play another rank 4, get to that. It just stops everything. And if you have Rage as well... I mean, the reason this deck doesn't top, to be fair, is that no one really plays it. Like, I, have, I, I, went, I saw a lot of different decks yesterday when walking through the venue at my regionals. I didn't see a single Salamangri. Not a single one. Like, there are decks out there that are better than what they seem to be because, like, no one actually plays them, right? Um... Well, there also, to be fair, there are reasons why people don't play Salamangrate, to be fair, you know, but it's not, it's still not a bad deck. Uh, it can perform, obviously, right? Um, but yeah. They can't do anything, because you can just kick them off of the field, and they can't do anything brave. Flame Bridge can't use its effects. They can't get a draw off our simple spoils. Pop I was there with no, Salad, well, then I didn't see you, but yeah. Get a search. I didn't it, say it no one played it, it but like, I didn't see any. Was, it's uh, just, it's very rare. No matter what, they're ending on a token. Unless they're playing the FK build. Well, no, FK build loses so much honor. Yes. I'm so wrong. Baron. No one expects this. And then I make it and it's like, okay, that's a Baron. Now I have to do a two Omni Negates, Dweller, and an SP. And from Ethan and Grave, it's like, you, it's so difficult to win. It's just <laughs> such a good card. And because of the regular combo where you just search wheel, summon back, Weasel, Gazelle, Jaguar, that's a 10. And you make this. And then the combo where you have a debug, Tiger, Gazelle, you normal debug, search spinny. Uh, Tiger discard 20, summon, Gazelle summon, so you have one on field, so you send a Jaguar. I mean, it's all like, we're talking like three, four card combos here, and we are not talking about the fact that everyone is on 15 hand traps as well. I don't know. It doesn't seem that yeah, realistic to actually pull that off. That, you link off, and then you do your wicked combo anyways. Anyway. Although it is true, if you play against Snake Eye, and by some miracle you end on Baron, SP, Dweller, Roar, Raging Phoenix, you probably win. Don't know, Baron, SP, Dweller, or Baron, SP, Roar. I'm pretty sure. It's just such a good card. All right, that's it for the main extra side deck. There are some things I don't like about the side deck. Bell I love. Card's amazing. It's just very good this format into everything. I feel like I should be siding this in a lot more. This card is very good, but I just don't have the room and I prefer not to take it out. Because going second, I'll usually put in uh, another card on the side. I'll take out Exceeds and like one line of hand traps. Uh, I, I keep meaning this, like this card's just very good. I'll start testing it to see if I can make it more. Uh, didn't have any lap today. But this is very good against Cash Tira and uh, Snake Eye. Lab did very little at this point. Okay, yeah, it was sucks weird. to suck Lab. You kind of deserve it. Anyways, uh, also good against Voiceless, but I hate Voiceless. Also good just going in second to yeah. all the floodgates that people side in. Because I have. I'm not digging the energy in this deck profile. I don't know. I'm always. I didn't burst any stun today, which surprised me. I always usually burst at least one stun at a, uh, what's on a high tier event, and that they always beat me because I just go first and I'm just like, I can't win this. Why are you? Why do you exist? I fucking hate stun players. They're just scum. And I mean that. Anyways, uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut this card. <laughs> Listen at the last two sentences uh, together. That is so funny. Oh my god. Hold up. First, I'm just like, I can't win this. Why are you? Why do you exist? I fucking hate stun players. They're just scum. And I mean that. Anyways, uh, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut. <laughs> that is not real. That is not real. You are not a real human being. That's crazy. That is crazy to do. That is not, that has to be, that has to be a bit. No, no, you can't, no, you can't be for real. You can, no, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny, man. <laughs> oh, why do you exist? Why do you exist, stun players? I fucking hate stun players, man. You're, you're freaking awful human beings. Um. Anyway, let's move on. I played three summon limit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. Oh, nah. 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 I, I need to watch that again. Scum. Scum. First, I'm just like, I can't win this. Why are you. Why do you exist? I fucking hate stun players. They're just scum. And I mean that. Anyways, uh, summon that. I'm, gonna <laughs> scum. I'm not gonna lie. This card did absolutely nothing for me. Every game that I opened it, they were losing to my battle photo instead. I, I played. How many rounds was it? 11 Dude, I'm crying, man. This I'm come up. crying. In fact, in so top 32, funny. I had two of these set. And Kodai just said, oh. that's cool. Fire King, summon from the hand. You can't beat over this. That's you have a so funny. Because I locked you into, like, we didn't lock me, but he just forced me into a summon. Oh, man. Which is very good, because I had, like, Rage and Roar. 
But no, because Vikings, I hate Vikings. <laughs> like, they're not as good as Pure, but they can be really annoying to deal with, with certain interruptions. Uh, last trap, Rage. Can't main this. You cannot main it. It's very bad to main, because it will ruin your life going second. And like, going first, you'd rather have a charge, which can be an extender, and also a pop. Like, it's a very good card, it's a blowout card. Like, popping four cards on the field, crazy. Popping two cards, still good. Like, I just, you can't main it. I want to. I'm like, I'm at 42 cards already. I could take out a- Oh god, okay. It was worth it to go through this profile for just that moment. That was worth it. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, phenomenal. Oof. Oh. Good. <laughs> nah, I need it one more time, man. I need it one more time. Good just going in second to yeah. all the floodgates that people cite Because I have a thing where I'm always... I didn't burst any stun today, which surprised me. I always usually burst at least one stun at a... Um, what's... on a high tier event. And they always beat me. Because I just go first and I'm just like, I can't win this. Why are you... why do you exist? I fucking hate stun players. They're just scum. And I mean that. Anyways. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut this card. <laughs> oh my, that's my favorite deck profile moment of all time. I think that's my favorite one. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. I've, I can't remember a funnier deck profile moment. That's so good. Oh god. Okay. All right. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. Oof. 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 Okay. So we could we could watch even more deck profiles. Like there's the pearly deck that made top 32. There's also a Vanquish Soul, but to be honest, I don't think there's anything super crazy to be expected from those. I mean it's it's fine. Um I can I I don't really want to. I want to play some Yu-Gi-Oh! myself. I know cringe behavior. I'm going to drop you the profiles for the for the Pearly deck and for the Vanquish Soul deck in the chat right now. If you guys want to watch any of them, if you are interested in the list, I just want to actually play some Yu-Gi-Oh now. Um, so the links in, are in chat right now. If you guys want to watch the uh, if you guys want to watch the Vanquish Soul or the Pearly one, uh, you guys can go ahead. However, what we're going to do now. Uh, is we're actually making a switch over to Master Duel because there's also some exciting stuff going on in Master Duel and I think we're going to try to have some fun with it because there's new cards uh, in the game and uh, I already saw some of it in my Challenger Cup last Friday and we're going to do some, some fun stuff. Uh, we're going to have some fun with Transaction Rollback um, and maybe even some Runic Earthbound today. How does that sound? All right, let's play some Yu-Gi-Oh! All right, uh, I have already, um, <laughs> I already have two proposals to make before we hop into rank. We still need to hit master one. Uh, the first thing is we can, we can play some runic earthbound, which I already have a pretty solid list for. I only need to figure out one thing to cut from the extra deck. I'm not sure which I want to cut because I forgot, I kind of forgot some of the lines that we figured out and they are a little bit different than from the TCG because we don't have Slipnir and I think Slipnir was relevant in some lines that we made. So I want to, we need to work out how we actually want to play the lines for this to adjust the extra deck. The side deck, the main deck's pretty solid, I think. Um, and then <laughs> uh, we can work on this if you guys want as well. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't, I'm not promising you that this is going to be good, but it would be funny. It would be funny. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, we're probably going to do both today. <laughs> Dude, I, I put accumulated fortune. I don't, I don't know if this is going to stay in the deck. But the idea is basically, basically, hear me out. Basically, what you do, and I'm pretty sure this is better than the shark deck that topped the YCS, so here we are. Um, you play, where's Prosp? Uh... I mean, it's not done. It's, 40, it's 62 cards. It's not done, but like, yeah. Um, the idea is you spam a bunch of Paleos. You, may, you mill with Needlebug Nest. You use Rise to Full Height to make it so your opponent can't attack. 
or use Aegis of the Ocean Dragon to make it so they can't kill your um, Paleos. And then you just roll back, control them with like Ice Dragon's Prison, Karma Cannon. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Punishment? Doesn't Punishment lock you for two turns? Yeah, we can't use Punishment because we want to go into our extra deck. <laughs> this was meta in 2017. Not this. Uh, I, I won a YCS in 2017 with 60 card Paleozoic. It wasn't quite like this. But uh, somewhat. It somewhat resembles it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we need Compulse. I don't even know if we want Torrential. Torrential seems good. Um, what are some other cool ideas? What can we copy with Transaction Rollback that's really funny? Well, not funny, but good. Rather. I feel like we have enough good things to copy. We can copy Karma Cannon, Ice Dragon's Prison... We can copy Needlebug's Nest if we want to. Eradicator? I mean, I'm not going to play Eradicator. What if I draw Eradicator? Fiend Comedian? Fiend Comedian. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Reasoning would be good here. Reasoning. I mean, we would have to cut Max C, but then we could play Reasoning. We could play Reasoning if we cut Max C, because then it gives us a backjack, guaranteed, and mills a lot of cards. That wouldn't be bad. The Black Goat Laughs. The Black Goat Laughs would be perfect for this deck but it's not in master duel unless i'm tripping yeah fairy tale snow fairy tale snow i don't think it's very good here i mean it's okay i guess This deck needs Dice It? What the hell is Dice It? No, no, I'm not playing Dice It. Isn't that the one that just mills the number of things that you roll? Where's Dice It? Dice It. No, this card's awful. It's more copies of Needlebug? Nah, we don't need more copies. We have Needlebug, we have Reasoning, we have Grass, we have Prosperity Desires to filter, we have Backjack to find Needlebug's Nest, we have Morella to send it if we have access to Rollback, we're fine. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Lost Wind is, uh, is good enough in 2024 anymore. Lost Wind might not be it. Lost Wind might not be it. And uh, compulsory. I mean, the problem is though, we do need some good mills for when we activate Needlebug's Nest. Maybe Lost Wind is okay. Compulse doesn't seem great. I also don't know if Trap Trick is that good. It's two trap activations. That's probably good enough. What about Get Out? Uh, I mean, I don't know if we need many more removal traps because we have Karma Cannon and IDP, Parrot Flames, 
Favorite Flames is a good card. But you have to like re resolve rollback a couple times before you can use it. Left arm offering sucks in this deck because we set. Uh, Bravioli man, thank you for the six months. Appreciate you. We can play one more two off trap card. Uh, trap tracks. What is trap tracks again? Target a monster you control, destroy it. And if you do, set a normal trap. I mean, I'm not going to have a monster very often, though. Nah, I don't think trap tracks is good. We could play the... What's the... Trap... Tantalizing tune. This is the uh the the yeah, we could play that. This card of paleo, draw two cards. Kind of awkward to draw it mid-game though. Hmm. Hope for escape. <laughs> Dude, the problem is we draw a lot of cards. What do we do with them? We could turn this into... We could turn this into a chain burn style deck. Where we just like... Draw a lot of cards. Trigger a lot of... Um, trigger a lot of paleos. But then we make it so our opponent can't kill any of our paleos. Because we have like Aegis. <laughs> draw one card for every 2000 points difference but then you could then you should probably just be playing um what's it called you should just be playing accumulated fortune that also draws two cards add wetlands what why would i want wetlands what's the point of making my paleos bigger that's not the point we don't need that we don't need that Um, how does accumulated fortune work with transaction rollback? Can I just copy it to draw two? I think so, yeah, right? No? Oh, but can I, if it's chain link four or higher, can I do it then? Then I can do it. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I see. I see. I see. All right. Okay. Um. Hmm. Oh, we can try it. Let's just try it for science. What do I? What I need? Link. I need. I need link monsters to link off my fairy tale snow. Uh, this one can link off snow. Uh, as a link one. Um, we can play Zeus with Downard. Uh, Topologics. What's the point of Topologic? Oh, because uh, because Snow. Yeah. Uh, Topologics. Eroboros. Centaurea. Uh, but we also need like Link Tus to go in with with this, right? Uh, I don't think we need... We need three. Maybe we need three Opabinia in this, but I'm not sure. We might not need this guy. Sprite Elf? Yeah, but we have nothing to revive with it. Akashic? The point. You should play this really cool rank 2 Xyz that needs 2 Aquas and can negate any card effect. I don't know what it's called. Mods, time him out. 5 minutes. 5 minutes from reminding me that Toad is banned. Okay, that was 10 minutes, but that's fine. <laughs> you went 10 minutes, you went overkill, but that's okay. I, I, I agree, I agree. Um... Hmm... 
I need a I need link twos to go in with snow. Area Celine access code. Hmm. Celine, I mean Celine. I mean we don't play spells, but I guess it counts the opponent's spells spells too, right? Yeah. Access code. Take out one Opabinia for a link two. What's the best link two for me to use? Charmer. I guess we can play Lina because Effect Veiler is a thing, right? So we have a, and it's a light monster, so we can make Lina. That's all right. Okay. All right. 2017 is back, everybody. And we're, if, there, if this doesn't work out, which I don't think it will work out super well, but I guess we'll have some fun with it. Uh, we can play some Runic Earthbound. I hope it works. Ain't no way it works. <laughs> hey, look, I'm trying. Bro, this hand is broken! God damn! No Karibo plays? No, I want to pitch it for Dynamicious. Oh my god! Yes. Um, okay. Well. Jamming waves! My lost wind! Why would you do that? Okay. Linkage. Okay, chain link two. We are almost at three. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. This accumulated fortune is a little weird, but we'll see. I could have gone needlebug and then draw two, but I want to. I want to use my trap cards after I use my. Dynamishes, but um, Um, so if they activate a card, I go chain back jack, but then I have to chain needle bucks nest. Then the back jack is just random, right? Which would which two would I like to draw? These two, yeah. I think so. Yeah, okay. Then do Needlebuck before Backjack? Right, I can go two Needlebuck, three... But now, now I ordered it in, a, in the wrong way. Now I ordered it in a way where I would be getting Rice to full height from that. Because I draw two first. I draw two first, then I get the back check. Dude. Uh, okay, so how do I do this now? I want to draw two, 
then mill five. Okay, so I need to chain back jack. Chain back jack. Chain nest. Chain paleo. Draw two. Easy Karma Cannon. We milled two Paleos and two Rise to Full Height. That's pretty good. Lost Wind is in the graveyard as well. They are the best player in the game though. All right. Cool. Chain Ray means they're... That's not going to work the way they think it will, I think. It does stop me from bringing back a Paleo, so it's not... Maybe it's intentional. Maybe they wanted it to do that. I do get Lost Wind from it, though. Ah, uh, the multi-roll hard open is pretty good here. Linkage... Do they set two? Probably not. No, they don't. Okay, they do. They go down on spells. All right. I was thinking about just using Dynamishes on the multi-roll, because that's going to be a problem in the long run, but... Oh, they set engage two. Okay. All right. Marella. All right, so. I wish we had a second monster. Maybe we should run Maxi. Maybe it's not that bad if we reasoning into Maxi, because then, I mean, reasoning now into Maxi would be pretty good. If I go Lost Wind now, if they chain block it, it's pretty bad for me. Do we think they're smart enough to chain block the Lost Wind? I don't think I can risk it. Don't they? They can't Shark Cannon. I have. I have no monster. They, they'd have to Linkage. They would have to Linkage. But that would be pretty bad for me. They chain blocked with Ray. I'm pretty sure they just used Ray though because they thought they were gonna get it back from Karma Cannon. I don't I don't think they knew. Uh I mean I think our position here is okay. We can what can we roll back into? We can roll back into Fiend Griefing. That's pretty nice. Alright, well. I don't think I'm gonna risk the lost win here. I'll just. The cool thing, by the way, about Karma Cannon on your own Paleos is that they go to Graveyard now. This one, this, this Dynamicious is going to go to Grave. They use Linkage here, which is okay. Banish the Shark Cannon, okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hit the Lost Wind. Uh, how many Paleos do I have? Two. I'll chain it.
Rhoda for another Ray. Okay. Um... Should I just needle bug nest? Should I just needle bug nest? Maybe. Let's go needle bug. Oh, they got ash. Okay. They're not making it easy for me, for sure. Uh. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Am I doing this too late? Because they've already declared an attack. If I target the other one now, can they can they still attack this one? I'm not sure. You're fine? Okay. Because technically it's better for me if they attack this one. Okay. I could use the second rise to full height to make them completely unable to attack, right? Um, oh, it doesn't say the clear. You're right. Yeah. Not worth it. <clears throat> Maybe not. Maybe not worth it. Oh, you're not worth it. What is Rise doing here? They can't attack the other Paleos now. Essentially is what it does. Uh, where's Transaction Rollback? There's Transaction Rollback. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be... I mean, they can't attack. <laughs> they can't attack with this Hayate right now. But regardless, this kind of was made properly, right? Uh, if I remember correctly, they didn't... Oh, no, they chained Ray. I actually can't bring back the Kaina. That's very annoying. Um, that is somewhat annoying. They can't attack anyways. It's all right. The symbol? Wait, which symbol? It doesn't have one. Uh, monster was not special summon. Okay, 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 yeah. Because what I wanted to do... You can copy Karma Cannon. I could have copied Karma Cannon, yeah. I mean, this engage will be banished, so it's okay. Let him cook. It's not gonna draw either, because they banished all their spells. Afterburners. Okay, hold up. Uh, I have no Aegis in the graveyard, but roll back. I kind of want to roll back. Wait, afterburner, face up monster, destroy it. What if I roll back Karma Cannon right now? What if I roll back to Karma Cannon right now? I kind of wanted to roll back Fiend Griefing. To get more traps. But I could roll back that to make the afterburner complete. Let's let's do it. Beep, beep, pop. Afterburner dead in hand, one set card, no targets for multi-roll in the graveyard. Alright. Yeah, 
If we chain the Ruma to Afterburner, how does it resolve? It still destroys because it says destroy it. Uh, if it says destroy that card, it's, it wouldn't destroy. That's what I checked for. All right. Marella is actually it. Marella is so good with transaction rollback. Um, you can target one set card. Send it to the graveyard. If you do, set a Paleozoic trap directly from your deck. It can be activated this turn. This is also pretty good. But not... I mean, this is better. This is lab with extra steps? Yeah, but the extra steps are fun. Is what you need to realize. Uh, I have bad news for you, my friend. That Imperm is not going to do you very well. Bop. Bop. Foolish, another transaction rollback. Oop. Give me that, Ray. Easy clap. Easy clap. Best deck. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Dude, let's... Can we actually rank up with this deck? No shot. Okay, drawing snow is pretty bad. The drawing transaction rollback is also pretty bad. This hand is pretty bad. Uh, okay. Let's go back, Jack. Blinker Evo. Uh, Needlebug Nest is good, however, we already know that we mill two bad cards with it, Prosperity and Accumulated Fortune. So I kind of want to get the Accumulated Fortune. I kind of just want to get the Accumulated Fortune here. And then I can like, you know, get, get it and then activate Morella. Yeah. Morella, send rollback. Activate Aegis, chain Mer Yeah, that works. We can resolve it. Do I set rollback? Maybe they play traps. But if they don't, it's just stuck on the board forever. In a normal game of Yu-Gi-Oh, aren't you just dead? I don't think we can die, no, because we just go Aegis, Chain, Morella, and then the Morella sits there and can't be destroyed and is unaffected by monsters. Like, against most decks, we cannot die with this setup. You can get rid of it with the Paleo Link? I guess. Mm -hmm. Ch 
chain Morella, chain backjack, get accumulated fortune. Yeah. Yeah. Labyrinth? Probably. Morella sends rollback. Where's rollback? Send rollback. Maybe I should have sent a second paleo even. No, I don't think. Wait, it's tier? I didn't expect that. Okay, well. Mill five. Sure. Wait, it is Labyrinth. Okay. They did they milled no trap card except for welcome lab. That's actually that's that's actually outrageous. Labyrinth Labyrinth. Okay. Okay. We can copy punishment with rollback. We don't have we have some yeah, okay, that works. That's alright. I wish we had some more paleos though. That's my problem. I wish we had more paleos. I could roll back copy Morella to get more paleos, unironically. I think that might be okay. So how does this work? This doesn't matter to me, right? As long as I have back row. Actually, if I have four sets, it doubles all my shit. It's actually good for me. Potentially, right? Uh, I definitely want to draw two with accumulated fortune this turn. So chain link one... But they ha I'd have to use Aegis for it. I don't want to use Aegis. I, th I think I'll copy Morella. Uh, Luke Tyler, thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. Hope you had a good stream. Uh, I can't really tell you what we're doing right now. It's kind of delicate. I can't really talk about it. Hidden things are happening right now. Uh, I'll send the Dynamishes. I don't really want to draw that right now. Okay. Cool clock. Okay. Big welcome labyrinth. Chain. 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 Chain! Chain. 
They can't pop my paleos with the field spell. They can't pop my paleos with uh, with lovely. They can pop my transaction rollback. Be my guess. Yeah, not even gonna go for lovely. Pop my rollback. Thank you. It's very funny. They have... I, I don't know if our grind game is better than theirs. I mean, probably not. Probably not. Wait, this is Chainlink 1, Chainlink 2, Chainlink... Can I draw two more? Can I? I'll try it. For science! Hell yeah! Boom! Give me more. Tack. Jawohl. Uh, phenomenal. <laughs> Deck is broken. All right. Dude, everything is doubled. <laughs> no. Aegis doesn't protect our extra deck. Aegis protects level three or lower water. Yeah. So it doesn't protect Opabinia. Okay. I sadly don't have any more Paleos in the graveyard. That be that. That's what we needed for this matchup. Like. Well, all right. That's the biggest issue. Oh, why did I summon them in attack? Uh, because I was planning to overlay them anyways, I suppose. Hold up. I can set one. I can set one. Let's set... All of my cards are really good. Uh, if I set one card... Let's set Needlebug's Nest. Let's normal summon Snow so that I can use it. Oh, they go Punishment. That does not work. On my little friends over here. I mean, they can chain Lady, but it's it won't pop. Okay, that's good. That's that 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 that's good for us. Yeah, did not read. Set Eradicator. Had they have used? Have they used the set card yet? From. I think they have, right? Yeah, so we have to get rid of that Eradicator. Which one is the Eradicator? Uh, this one. Okay. Roll back their Eradicator? We could. We don't have a rollback anymore. Entus is gonna pop our Needlebug's Nest. That's okay. Um... We're going to set another card. Set IDP. Goals and match is irrelevant for us. Okay, so we know all the back row, right? We just win. Well, I mean, just win. But it's like... What's the other? There's like, there's an EV. What's the other one? I forgot. I felt like we knew everything. Well, okay, maybe not. Big welcome. Is it big welcome? Oh, yeah, because the furniture said it. Yeah, okay, okay. Bop, bop. Uh, here. Mm 
this. Um, have I used? I have used rollback this turn. We have to use all annoyance. Oh, you know what I had to do? It was I had to summon this in attack position. I had to banish, I had to summon this in attack and make Zeus. Ah. Uh, okay. Well. You've used rollback this turn? You can't Zeus on the Yeah, but like I can I can Olenoids the Gozen. I could have Olenoids the Gozen, and if this was an attack position. Uh I can make Cambro Raster. Unaffected. Target a set card in the spell and trap zone. Send it to the graveyard. Set a Paleozoic directly. It can be activated. Um Send the big welcome. Cambro Raster. I'm so low on time. Cambro Raster. Dynamicious. Dynamicious Banish. Bring back one. I don't play Gigantic. Maybe I should. I just built the deck. It's alright. I mean, we're gonna live. I don't know if we can outgrind, necessarily. Very low on time. No fiend in their graveyard at the moment. Set eradicator. Yeah. Uh. We have Ku clock. They have Ku clock. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, I, I just missed the Zeus. We lose this, but I missed the Zeus. If, if I see the Zeus play, I think we actually win. Ah, oh, that's so unfortunate. Okay, well. That's fine. Can't complain if I, may, if I misplayed. That was my fault. That was actually a winnable game. Because if I go, if I go pop the Gozen and then Zeus them, I'm pretty sure the game is over. Because I have Zeus set for... Will you update lab today? We can update the lab list, yeah. I want to play some Earthbound Runics as well. Okay, let's go. Reasoning. Boom. Give me some juicy mills reasoning. Let's go. Okay, no good mills yet. Paleo 1. Paleo 2. Backjack. All right, that's fine. Two paleos and a backjack. That's decent. Uh, Needlebug's Nest is going to mill Snow and Lost Wind. That's pretty good. Trap Trick, Rise, Morella, Griefing. All right. Should have kept Rise in hand for Dynamicious. I don't have Dynamicious. I'm not going to copy Dynamicious with the thing. Uh, okay. I'm also not going to set it with Trap Trick. Ooh, it's Rescue Ace. All right. Yes. Original. Uh, 
not quite sure yet where I'm supposed to use these interactions. But like, I have like pretty good setup already. Uh, fire attacker. When does this draw? If a card is added to your opponent's hand except by drawing. Okay, I probably won't be doing that. That's all right. Um. Oh, okay. Turbulence. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and backjack now. We're gonna backjack. We're gonna get Needlebug's Nest. We're gonna toggle on. We're gonna Needlebug's Nest. Chain this. Maxi actually hurts this deck on the on the opponent's turn. Like I'm glad they don't have it right now. This. Mill, another backjack. Mill snow. Okay, we're the best. Uh, doesn't really matter. Didn't you know your mills? I only knew two of them. I knew two of my mills, not all. Uh, okay. We knew snow. Oh yeah, we did know snow. I didn't know about the backjack. That's true. Yeah. Uh, draw one with this. It's fine. What's the wording on turbulence? Oh, alert. Add a rescue. Okay. Sure. I can just snow. I can book the turbulence though, right? There's nothing that stops me from doing that. This deck is so based. This deck is very fun. It's it's uh, it's very fun. It, I, I'm pretty sure you can get some nice wins with it, but like, okay, airlifter. They just have everything. It's a shame they won't be able to attack us. Okay, so when does this trigger? If a monster is special summoned, okay, yeah, that's gonna happen. They're gonna get that effect. Um yeah, I mean, go go ahead. Do your thing. I might just Morella for transaction rollback and the Ruma Karma Cannon them. Okay, it doesn't matter what they hit here, except for Trap Trick. Trap Trick would be really annoying. Sick. Ah. Uh. Well, I'm not gonna chain it. I should, yeah, maybe it's because it's in the middle, yeah.
I don't think they can realist I, I'm not well now if they have ash blossom they can resolve R turbulence because I like yeah okay nightmare unicorn as well okay they're going in on the back row this time it doesn't really matter what they hit unless they hit the unless they want to target the lost one but that would also be fine but yeah they just hit the Marilla okay Marilla chain Uh, chain dynamishes. Pop. Roll back. There. Um... I'm thinking about snowing the hydrant. Because now they make Axis Code Talker, that forces my rollback, but then I just snow the turbulence instead. Both both lines are fine. Mm. I'll just I'll just karma cannon the access code. So now they have HQ and Turbulence in hand, right? Yeah. Do you, do you need to Karma the access code? I mean, I it does force my back row, no? Like, I don't want to just shotgun both of my traps right now and lose my lost win still. Can be targeted. Yeah, Hydrant can be targeted as long as they have no other rescue ace. They didn't have another rescue ace, guys. You could have targeted it. Uh, it's a Cybers. Is there a Cybers? I could have otherwise. I could also just IDP it, but uh, there's no Cybers. No. Okay, I'll just Karma Cannon. Yeah. Uh, banish one karma cannon because we have two. Um, needle bug because we have two. Reasoning trap trick. Well, yeah, trap trick, reckless. Banish needle bugs. Oh, now I banished both the rumors. It's okay. It's whatever. Suck. Target four rescue cards, shuffle them into the deck, then draw a card. Okay, so Fiend Griefing doesn't prevent that. That's all right. That's okay. I mean, what's the worst thing they can draw here? They have they can they have an extra normal for rescue aces, but like, I don't know. I think we're fine. I think they just got completely obliterated. What exactly did you look for in the text of HQ? Uh, so there's cards like Pot of Avarice. Um that say you need to shuffle all five into the deck in order to get the draw two. Uh, for HQ, it has different wording. It says shuffle them back, which means it doesn't matter if one of them is missing. So some of those kind of cards you can interrupt with like DD Crow or Fiend Griefing, and, but not all of them. It depends on the specific wording on it. 
All right, let's do one more with this just to see if we can rank up with it. And if we do rank up with it, uh, we can uh, we can move on and play some Earthbound Rune. This deck is fun, though. We could maybe work on the list a little bit and have it in our like arsenal of decks when we do the wheel gaming and stuff like that. We consider the deck a success? No, absolutely, for sure. Okay, let's see how it goes going second. Technically, the idea behind the deck is that you just make it so your opponent is unable to kill your Paleos with like Aegis or... or um. Aegis or Rise to Full Height, so it literally doesn't matter what your opponent does. Like, you just, like, ignore their field. Uh, and you just, like, grind for a bit. Uh, I think going second, it can be tough. <laughs> Sag, they picked, they pitched the Fake Veiler. That's like, I hope they just draw phase Max us. That'd be very funny. I need the decklist for Earthbound Runic. Show decklist in a second. Yeah, I'll show it before we play it. I'll also show this one before we leave off of it. Also, I need to close my window. It's very cold. Okay, so they got rid of the Diabell Star, which is a good sign, because that probably means they won't go for, like, some uh, Borolot Savage plays. That's good, dude. Pretty nice. Wing second versus Maxi might be the Kryptonite. Well, it depends if they shotgun the Maxi, because then it's irrelevant. The problem with Maxi, Maxi is really bad for us if they, draw, if they drop it on their own turn when we want to bring back all of our Paleos. The end board should be beatable. Uh, I mean, the I think maybe we need more banish effects for this matchup, because I think one way you can outgrind Snake Eye is by banishing the important cards, like Oak and Flamberge. Uh, I don't know if they're, like, IDP is good for that, but maybe we need more like this. I'm not sure what it would be. They probably chain to Desires? Yeah, maybe. The grind game will be hard? Oh yeah, it will be. It will be, but it's also going to be fun. Chain Disappearance? That would be good. But it wouldn't really help that much. Karma Cut? I mean, we can't... I, I don't think this card traps are that great here. Like, we already have Dynamishes, and that, I think that should be enough. Can you play Sphere Mode or Lava Golem if you have to go second, for example? You can, however, those cards ruin it every time you go first, so I don't know. But technically, we have almost no normal summons, so it's like not completely unreasonable. Is lava Go lava golem is ignored by reasoning, right? Because it can't be normal summoned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Theoretically possible. Theoretically possible. Is Sphere Mode ignored? Uh, I think Sphere Mode... Is Sphere Mode a normal summon? It's a normal summon, right? I think that's why it isn't ignored. I'm not sure. I don't know the exact text on Sphere Mode. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not 100% I'm not confident. I moved to Germany recently. I was wondering if locals are mostly in German or English Berlin area. Uh, I mean, if you go to a German regional, by default, people will be speaking German, but most people will also be able to at least somewhat communicate to you in English. Like, it's like, uh, most people will be able to talk to you. <laughs> like, you just need to tell them, can we talk English? I don't actually, uh, I don't speak German, and then it's going to be fine. Like, I had one opponent like that yesterday who just went like, yeah, my, my, my German isn't very good. Can we just talk English? And so that was also fine. Like, you know. Wait, how is this the end board? Okay, this is beatable. Maximi, please. 
Please. Do it. No, we didn't get max seed. Okay. Um, I want Karma Cannon. I want Morella. I want Torrential. I want Aegis. We need Aegis to survive, to guarantee survive. So it's definitely one, two, three, four. And I think I'm going to go Dynamicious as the last one and discard my Lost Wind. Yeah. Which one is the worst one that I want to set in the middle? Probably Dynamicious. Morella. Karma. Aegis. One cool thing between Aegis and Torrential is that your Paleos also can't die anymore to your own Torrential. Why don't we threaten evenly here? That's a good point. I didn't think of it. We should have gone Battle Phase first because we weren't going to use it anyways. That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Because now we're just going to get Unicorn for no reason. They probably would have made Apollosa. That was a good point. Yeah, that was a good point. We, we should have gone... Um, we should have gone battle phase because they would have Apollosa'd. You're right. That's a good point. That's my bad. Oh, they didn't use the effect. Okay, cool. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Snake Eye Ash effect. Uh, I have to keep in mind that the Unicorn cannot be destroyed by card effects. That's going to be rough when I Torrential. Um, but yeah. I mean, it's still a good Torrential, I feel like. Birch, Flamberch, Revive 2. We'll see. I mean, I don't have to Torrential yet. It's not threatening, is it? What can be Karma Cannon? Yeah. Yeah, activate, activate. Sure. It's a shame that Dynamicious is not cost, actually, because then you could copy it, copy it with Rollback to just Banish. That'd be nice. Jet Synchron and Original has been added. Okay. All right, so what's the plan? They designed Dynamicious so you couldn't discard a Paleo for cost to immediately summon one. Yeah, I know. It makes sense. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be super broken if it did that. Yeah. I want it to be broken, though. Can I screenshot the list after the game for the Discord? Yep, absolutely. I can. I, I'll, I wanted to show it anyways. Yeah. Battle phase. Okay. Uh, do we accept this damage or not? Do we accept this damage or not? I think we can go for a little gambit. Hold up. Uh, 
gonna send a roll back. Um, I mean, I could take it though. Like, what's the issue? It's 37, 59. I go to 21. I'm gonna be very low because of rollback, anyways. Ah, no, you know what? I'll take it. The Ruma clears Unicorn, but I don't want a Daruma yet. I don't feel like I need to Daruma this yet. I want to get more out of it. I'm not, I'm living this, so. How is that the end board? It seems like they are practicing the deck, yeah. It seems like they, yeah. It's all good though, it happens. Normal summon, Jet Synchron. Uh, the Ruma here. The Ruma here, and then attack over these with Paleos next turn. Mm. Torrential. I mean, the, the problem about Torrential is it doesn't take away the Unicorn. Uh, and I also, if I Torrential, I can't chain my Paleo. Because it would die to Torrential. If I just Torrential this now, it also is fine, though. Like, I can just get the Torrential out of my system. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll Torrential and not chain a Paleo. I think that's fine. I wasn't gonna... Okay, that's good to know. I wasn't gonna chain a Paleo, you know, but all right. Up, 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 up. Sure. They can bring back Jet Synchron. The question is, do they play Access Code Talker or not? Uh, to be fair, Access Code Talker right now is just one pop. Because they only have Darks. But I probably still would have to get rid of the Access Code Talker. I would probably still... Oh, they, they just pass. Okay, cool. So we have forced a Maxi in a spot where they shouldn't have Maxi. That's good. Fiend Griefing is a great card for this matchup. Uh, can we go in here? I, I could Dynamishes. Vanish, bring back the other Paleo. Um, then I would have to Aegis to bring back another one. I can check for another Max C this way, which is good. Because, yeah, I, I think it's worth going for Dynamishes here. Banish field spell? I could also... Oh, yeah, maybe it's banish field spell. Probably, yeah. Dynamish is the field spell. Check if they have maxi. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Get rid of the field spell. Chain this. See if they have a paleo... Uh, a maxi. They do not. Okay, good. Uh, Summon a paleo. Discard lost wind. Bye-bye field spell. Um, do I spend one Aegis to get another Paleo out to start doing Opabinia things? The answer is probably yes. I have two anyways. Let's do it. Let's do it. Chain. Pop. The set is most likely Imperm. 
most likely. But it depends if they use it correctly or not. Because if they wait for me to detach, I can bring back the Paleo. If it's called by, it's completely dead. That's the good news. Where are the tier cards? I don't need no tier cards, dude. Yeah, they wait with Imperm. That's not good for them. Chain! All right. Mm. You can target a set card in the spell and trap zone. Send it to the game. I'd have to send my own. Roll back. Nah, we just vibe here. We vibe. This deck's so grindy, man. I love it. Phenomenal gameplay. Original. Send Flamberge. Yup. I wish I had more Paleos in the graveyard because I'm, I'm not getting any out of these, out of the situation, but it's all right. Would Imperm affect the trap monsters? You can't target the trap monsters with Imperm because they don't have an effect. Can't you griefing Flamberge there so they can't trigger it? I can, but they can still get it out later with the Snake Eye Ash. Like, I'm not preventing them from resolving Flamberge. It's fine. Let them let them have it. Let them have the Flamberge effect. I can't prevent it. Like, we're just slowly grinding them out of their Snake Eye cards. It's so like eventually they're gonna run out of targets for all that. There's the poplar. This is where we we've we've been in this position earlier. And it's just like whatever. Transaction the TT? I don't really want to. So, I, 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 they played, how many originals was that? Two, two originals, okay. Assemble Nightingale. Nice try. Do you think this deck can keep up with a good Snake Eye player? Uh, very hard. And also, you'd have to practice it a lot. And you'd have to... The, this is just a very first draft. Like, I, I'm... this the, the deck is, like... Annoying. I don't know if it's actually good, though. All right. Get Karma Canoned. It's just a shame that we don't have Paleos here, man. I'd love to have more Paleos. I, I was thinking about... Uh, oh, no, I couldn't even. I don't have Morella in the graveyard anymore. I can't roll back Morella right now. But, well, now it's main phase two. It's main phase two. We have rollback for Karma Cannon again if we want to. So I don't think they can make anything meaningful happen here. Jet Synchron is what I waited for. To Fiend Griefing. An Xyz monster still battled there? No, it didn't. Oh, that's good. Uh, okay, yeah. Alright, Ash. Why do Paleos not return to the Spell and Trap Zone? Because they are monsters now. 
They're not they're not still a trap card. They are just actual monsters. This card is not treated as a trap. It says right there. That does not make formula synchron, buddy. I hate to tell you. I hate to break it to you, but that is a that is two tuners. I don't know what you're trying to do with that, but I don't think it's gonna be what you want it to be. Link Karibo. Okay. Sure. They had enough. They had enough. <laughs> Poggers! Okay. Easy as that. This deck is fun. I think I'm gonna keep it around. I think I'm gonna keep it around and I think I'm gonna like uh maybe work on it a little bit because it's fun. It's fun to annoy people and rank with it because they don't know what to do against it. Because it plays very, very uh, like unusually. It, the way it plays the game is very, very different from everything else. So it's very funny. Because you just like, you summon these, these monsters that are unaffected by monster effects. You make it so they also can't attack them. So whatever they do, they can't clear your board. And you just like sit there and, and spam trap cards. It's very fun. Uh, Team Chief, thank you for the five months. Appreciate that. All right. So uh, yeah, this was just a first draft. I'm going to keep it around. I might include it in the in the in the wheel of decks whenever we play like all different kinds of decks. And uh, maybe we can have some more fun with it in the future. That was fun. All right. Another deck that I wanted to play was the Runic Earthbound. Um, because the Earthbound cards are now in the in the game. The problem I have is I we have to cut one card from the extra deck, but I really wanted to keep Crimson and what was the how would we make Crimson Dragon in the other version? We talked about this a, a little bit a, a while ago. What was the way to make Crimson Dragon? I forgot. Did it include uh, Slipnir? It was with Slipnir? Yeah, okay. All right, then we just don't have Crimson Dragon. Uh, okay, yeah, we can play this. This list is, uh, this list is, is, is pretty fire. As long as you just don't get max seed, you should be winning. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. How do you make Bestial this patter? You can make it with Ancient Fairy Dragon, special level 3 tuner. You can still do it. I would have been a banger hand going first. Going second, it depends what they're playing. Ah, uh, it's not a good sign. That's not a good deck either, but they did go uh, and win. They, they won the coin flip, which was very smart of them. What do you think about the new Harmonic Synchro Fusion? It gives you a fusion and a synchro for two materials. It's an okay card. I, I have decided to not play it in here. There was a... There was a very... Um, there was a very long dis the discussion about it. We built this exact deck for the TCG a couple weeks ago. The video of it is on my Plus channel. Uh, and the deck profile is on my main channel. You can go exclamation mark YouTube if you are interested in it. Uh, yeah, I'm not watching all that. Um... The, yeah, just exclamation mark YouTube, you can check out the process behind it. Because the, we talked about it very long and in detail. We, we, I talked about all of that. Why I'm not playing Denglong, why I'm not playing Drago Stapelia. It's all in that. And the reasoning is the same for Master Duel. I don't think those cards are good.
Come on, man. Nice coin flips, though. Hmm? They haven't made a play yet. I ashed this one because I figured, like, if they have an extender, I'm going to lose anyways. Oh, okay. They're locking them. Okay, that's good. All right. Locking themselves into super heavies. Maybe winnable? Probably a lot of hand traps in hand then. And definitely follow up. We'll see. What's the level 8 synchro again? Is that a quick play spell trap pop, right? This one? Yeah, that's annoying. That is somewhat annoying. Do you still play Lord Karna? I still have the cards, but I don't really play it. We, we don't really play anymore. At the moment. It's just like time issues. Don't have the time for it that much. There are so many... Yeah, the super heavy for some reason is like an archetype that no one asked for. And they still were like, yeah, here you go. 50 of them things. I asked? No, you didn't. <laughs> Why release the Unchained cards if you could also just have these guys around, right? True. So true. I can physically already feel the presence of the Max C in their hand, by the way, which is very annoying. What is that? Oh, draw the three? Are they making the big synchro? Oh yeah, okay. This is if I activate a spell trap, they get to draw until they have three cards in hand. Okay. I don't know if I like that. I guess they can make both. Because they can pendulum summon. Maybe they don't have Maxi then? Maybe not. I mean, they can still Pendulum. They can still make the other guy. What do you think is the best Runic version in Master Duel? I want to craft it. Uh, probably Bistial. Bistials are actually okay against Snake Eyes to banish Masquerina. So they, they kind of count as non-engine. I kind of like the Bistial version because of that. Naturia is also still very good. Okay. All right.
It's a super big telegraph that I have another tip, but it's whatever. Okay, that's fine. I want to do some special summoning before I activate another spell because now they're going to draw two and I don't want to risk them drawing into a maxi when I haven't done my important stuff yet. Oh. Okay, well, never mind me. Uh, that, that is not something I expected. Uh, well, I guess we just hope they don't draw maxi then. I have Metal Marcher for the situation, so I can get out of it. But... Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to let them draw another card with Droplet, is the problem. Because I can't Synchro away the Hugin. If I Synchro away the Hugin, they can just pop my Fountain. Unless they use this guy now. Which they shouldn't. If they use this now, I can use Droplet Special, but they won't. Yeah. It's smarter. All right, we banished one maxi. That gives me hope. Uh, we lose to Valor as well. They Valor the Hugin in response. No, okay. Activate Garden, Fountain Goes to Grave, Smiting Storm, Summon Geary. Um, yeah, okay. Do I want a token? Do I want them to have a token or not? Mm, I want to make a level 5 Synchro, and then I want to bring back... This guy, which is 1600. So I need two tokens for that. I need two tokens for that. Meaning special Gary Synchro. Yeah, okay. I'm activating Garden. Gary. Gary effect. Fountain back to hand. We have to try and find a way to draw one more card somehow. And that needs to be a runic that we can still use. This. Axel. Here. Why did they have a response? Oh, they have Nib now. Okay, they drew Nib as well. Sick. Love that for me. Uh...
Yeah, we can't beat that. We can't beat Ash Bell, draw three, pop a spell card at Nibiru. Can't do that. We still get this thing. Like, they, they played that pretty bad, but we can't do anything with it. Uh, yeah. All right. Can we not lose a dice roll or coin flip to Monadium or Super Heavy ones? I want to have fun playing this game. Why no Axel pitch Jet Synchron? I could have done it beforehand, yeah. Sick. Good start. David Senator, thank you for the 17 months. Appreciate you. I haven't really thought about doing merch yet at all. I don't know if that's something I want to do. Scream. Sea Mare. I honestly feel like just keeping Ash for their maxi. I don't know if Ashing this Seamare... Like, okay. Essentially, Ashing this Seamare is only good if my maxi resolves. Uh, if my maxi doesn't resolve because they have called by... Hmm. Nah. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Because they have share anyways. I know that they can play. So. Wouldn't they call by the Ash? That depends on how good they are and what the other card in their hand is. If they have a monster that they can send for share in, then I don't think you would. Double King of the Swamp milled. Okay. Please, man. Thank you. Can I draw, like, Runix? Pretty please? Keldo. No, not Keldo. Mudora and Keldo! Oh my god, dude. They milled Mudora, Keldo, Sharon, Reinhardt. You have got to be kidding me, man. Tier limit is so annoying. sake why is it double shuffler man What is Grapha? There's probably Grapha here, right? Yeah. 
why 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 was it double king of the swamp right at the bat? It's oh no, they just make kick colors. Okay. That's fine. This would be winnable without double shuffler, and if my hand was in complete and utter garbage, like three normal summons. It would be very much winnable. Yeah, cool, dude. It's You're so skilled, dude. You're so good. I like how you mill. You mill so well, man. It's actually so crazy. You're so good at milling. Paleos could easily win this. Unironically, probably yes. The, the shufflers would still fuck me up, though, so... I think my win con there was that they max see me. I could maybe have decked them out with the Smiting Storm banish whatever many and Destruction banish four. Uh, Earthbound Prison. Does that do anything? Negating anything right now? Not yet. So I'm going to use this to special. We can do a decent amount of stuff here. I don't think it's going to be enough, but we can try. A man can dream. Okay, they snow instantly. I don't really know why. I guess booking my extra monster zone is is actually yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty bad. Yeah. I could clear it up if I had stone sweeper, but I do not. I could tribute summon because I get an extra normal from prison. Are you really thinking about that? Yeah, okay, come on. Okay, waste the shuffler insta. Cool. It Man, it's so annoying. Just for no reason. For no reason. Even leaves the jet there, just like the two runics. You are just a gambling addict, is what you are. Rhino Heart, Trick Clown, Shadol Beast. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. Unreal games. All the progress ruined. All the progress with the Paleo deck has been ruined. By freaking coin flips, man. It's one of those. Why is it? Why does this always happen? Every other day, you just get completely stomped. Lose four coin flips in a row. Monadium, super heavy, tier gamblers. It's 
it's like Raran said, you're in the loser's queue. Sometimes it really feels like that, man. I know it's not true, but sometimes it really feels like you're just having a bad day. Alright, give me a tuner. Uh, I suppose. Let's bluff battle phase. You just have no fear, do you? Dude, you're mad! Okay. Oh, one fountain, right. I wanted to discard my black garden to bait Imperm, but all right, well. Well. Don't want to hit the big welcome. That's okay. It's not really okay, but it's really bad if they play Eradicator, which is a terrible card in Master Duel right now. They shouldn't be using it, but I say that as they probably search for the Eradicator in their deck, most likely. No punishment. Okay. Easiest called by draw of my life. Uh, not gonna trigger fountain here. Wait, Stovey? I get a draw. That's very nice. Okay. Sick. Take those. Okay. Suck. No more big welcomes. Get owned. Pop deck Ash. Get owned even more. Draw three. Get Giga owned. Uh. We're gonna have to normal summon Ash, I think. I think we have to normal summon Ash. Which is okay here. Because, I mean, they've used both welcomes this turn already. We have to normal summon Ash, I think. Yeah. Okay. Normal summon Ash. Synchro into five. Activate Black Garden. Special Geary to add back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they have one more back road that they can use.
We'll see what it is. Uh, probably Axel. It could be IDP. As they discarded one, it could be IDP. It wouldn't be that bad, though, if it was. It'd be all right. Do I want to get Black Garden tokens or not? Probably not. Uh, increase. Increase set black garden. Slumber. Special. Geary. Add back fountain. All right, we're back. We're so back. Imperm? That's fine. We're still back. Uh, Baron or Chengying? It might be Chengying, honestly. Chengying goes hard here, I'm pretty sure. Chengying. Keep. Uh, which one have I not used yet? This. Banish Maxi. Activate Chengis. Would buy that. Would buy that. Special Summon. Gary too. Fountain. Oh yeah, we're so back. Pop, pop. Tuck, tuck, tuck. I needed this game. I needed this Labyrinth opponent for my morale. I needed it. Even though it would be nice to go first once, because we've lost all four coin flips with this deck so far. Um, Yeah, that'd be really cool. But we needed this one for the, for the morale. That one was important. Our opponent is called Free Engage. I wonder if someone's stream sniping, but someone is definitely winning the coin flip for the fifth time in a row. Oh, you're letting me go first. That's paid actor, right? That's surely, surely that's a paid actor. Who is it? Who is it, chat? Who's queued into me right now with the nickname of Free Engage and is letting me go first? Okay, now it's like five people in chat saying me. It could also hear me out. Maybe it's just someone... Who uh who really wants Engage back? Maybe it's just Sky Striker. You ever thought about that? Maybe it's just Sky Striker. And they really want Engage back. Who knows? It could be. It could just be blind second Sky Striker. Alright, well. That's fine, because we have tip. We still can't use it, because we if we had a tuner instead of the maxi, it'd be insane, but we don't. Well. Fountain Gaming. It is actually Sky Striker. Okay, maybe they're not watching the stream. Maybe it's just actually Sky Striker. <laughs> Okay, noted. It's Sky Striker. Cool.
Upstart Goblin. Okay. Rose. I think Rose is worth max seeing. Maybe, potentially. They might just pass, though, which is scary. I'll max see it, though. Because they can't chain. Now, the question is are they really going to give me zero draws? Uh oh. Monka Christ. Oh, yeah, but if you want to use Engage, you have to link off this Rose. You have to give me a draw in that case. So I'm actually okay with that. Unless you have like multi roll or area zero, that'd be annoying. Please don't have that. Yeah, okay. All right, vibes. That's all right. I'm going to have freezing curses. This Hayate. We banished second engage. That's our that's good. We banished afterburner too. Oh come on. Okay. Hogging. Alright. Vibes. Wouldn't curses on Kagari be better? Uh I mean it's it. If they make Kagari, I get another card from from Maxi. But most importantly, like this one would be the third spell in the graveyard, so they could already draw off of the first engage. I didn't want that. Main phase two. Sky Striker actually doesn't have a card that deals with Runic Fountain, right? Like I mean Camellia, I guess, but like not not none of the spells do it. Yeah, they're not even going to use their engage. They're greeting their engage. Okay, fine. Another curses. Sweet. Um. Hmm. Let's start freezing curses to special. I think. I want to check for Max C. I do want to check for Maxi. They didn't have it turn one. Jamming waves can only pop set cards. Yeah. Um. Chain destruction to give them zero draws. I think that's a vibe. I took Gary because it's safe from afterburners, but maybe I should have just gone Hugin. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, card in hand is engage. We are the best in the game though, so it's fine. We have tip, we have ash, we are gamers. All right, I will tip. And because you have no ray in the graveyard, I can actually just pop this Hayate. Uh, banish Hornet Drones. Okay, that's a one of. Uh, Fountain not yet. Flash the fire on this Hayate. Back. Up. Up. 
Uh, Marco Shafanta, thank you for the 10 months. Appreciate the support, everybody, today. Thank you so much. You guys have been amazing. Thank you, thank you. All right, no more runics, but it's all right. I'm, I'm okay. This hand is good. <laughs> use your engage. Yep, use your engage for no draw. <laughs> we did it. That's a, that's like a, that's a, a mental victory because they kept this engage for so long because they were greeting it. They were greedy with it. We have Ash anyways, but like it, it's, it's important to win these little wars, you know? Just the fact that they really wanted to draw to draw a card with that engage is 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 important to me. <laughs> okay, nah, nah, not the Gary man, not like this. Don't do it to him like that. Oh. Dude, that's crazy. That's actually wild. That's... 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 Mean. That's vile. <laughs> Top deck freezing curses, man. We are so good! <laughs> oh man no thank you <laughs> oh my god they just wanted to show off their royal Shizuku. I'm 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 certain. Cause it doesn't actually search them anything good, right? Because they can't grab engage. Multi-roll. Alright. Sick. Can I draw a runic? Nope. Okay. Uh alright. That's fine. Normal summon. F. Imperm. Okay. Cool. Uh, special summon. Uh, charge warrior to draw a card immediately. Or a Coral Dragon to pop the Shizuku. Probably Coral Dragon to pop the Shizuku. Because if I go... If I go Charge Warrior and I don't draw a Runic... How many Runics do I have? A lot. Uh, but if I don't draw a Runic... I am kind of screwed. A little bit. I need to pop this Shizuku. It needs to go. There's no Ray in the graveyard. Even if there was, it'd be good. I wish they had Ray because it would. I would call by it, and then I would be able to tactics draw. Uh, send jet. Pop this. Uh, set this. Skip battle. It's fine. Uh, they have multi roll. Whatever. Even if they draw a way to make Kagari, I can call by the other Kagari. It's alright. It's whatever. End phase. Alright. Vibes. Runic. No. Can you OTK? Probably not. I'll just use this Earthbound Prison as a discard for Jet. Mm, we draw. We can draw two cards here because we can go 
charge warrior into croc and i mean surely we have a runic by then surely we have a runic by then Dude! Where are they? I can pop my own coral, yeah. Wait, they are, they are playing to nib? That's actually- Nib me! Please! Please! Yes. Okay, easy clap. We win. Nibiru, your opponent draws three cards. This actually, this is actually criminal. How is how is the universe just cutting me off of my runic so badly right now? Okay, thank you. I was about to say, man. We can do this all day, man. I don't mind. I got time. Song name? Uh, Snowman by Sia. <laughs> Normal summon Ash. Menacingly. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, I mean, hey, what did we do with this deck? We didn't, we didn't go positive with this. We went two and three, but like, honestly, we've lost five coin flips in a row, man. This deck is not that bad. It's not that great either. It's not the best deck ever or anything, but it's fun. And like, if you go first, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty bad if you go second into Monadium or Super Heavy Samurai, though. Or when, um, Tealament mills both shufflers. That's what we learned, but, uh, it's fun. So here's the list if you want to try it out. I don't think I would change anything. I think the list is fine as it is for, for Master Duel format. I think it's all right. It's like a... It's a solid Paleo deck, man. Like, if you want to... Uh, not Paleo. It's a solid Runic deck. If you want to play it, you can. It's it's fine. Um, This or Runic Stun? I mean, always, always this over Stun. Like, it's way more fun. But, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I can also show you the other deck again in case you want to try it. It's... <laughs> In case you want to try it, you, here you go. Uh, you can work on it. I think you can make it better. I think you can make it better. There's probably ways to make this better. Uh, yeah. No resonators. No resonators because resonators don't really work out with the levels. Like, the problem is the extra deck is really tight. And if you play Vision Resonator, you need, like, you technically you would want, like, level 4 Synchros with the gear, with the Hugin, uh, all that kind of stuff. The, the, the Vision Resonator doesn't really add anything to the deck, really. Um... Prosby versus Extravagance. I mean, you could probably play Extravagance, but you need some of your extra decks, so you'd have to play multiples and stuff like that. Play around with it. It's fun. Uh, it's very fun. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep working on these two decks. I'm pretty sure we're going to include both in like this whole thingy here where we have all these decks. I'm going to keep them around, and I'm going to include them the next time we have the spinning wheel and all that. I think, uh, I think it's going to be fun. I think we can work on them a little bit. Um, Morganite in Paleo. 
maybe 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 you're onto something i don't know because uh you can skip your opponent's turn with like uh with like uh agus and stuff like that i don't know maybe that's overcooking it though <laughs> uh okay everybody uh today's been a very fun stream i hope you enjoyed it too uh viewer numbers have been pretty pretty nice uh thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it um thank you for all the support as usual um appreciate you guys for hanging out I'm going to actually upload a YouTube video right now, or well, it's already, I think it's already uploaded. Let me see if I can just uh, send you guys over there for a change. Hold up. Uh, YouTube studio. Is it ready? Uh, it is ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to make it public and you guys are going to go ahead and, uh, you know, I'm spamming the, the, the video link right now. It's a very fun video. It's when, uh, it, it was when I played against, um, it's when I played against, what's it called? Um, you guys in, in gold format in Master Duel. <laughs> when is your deck profile getting published? Probably tomorrow or, or Wednesday. Probably tomorrow or Wednesday. All right, chat. The, the link to the YouTube video is, um, the, the link to the YouTube video is, is in chat. I'm still going to rate Jesse, I think. You guys said Jesse is live. I'll, I'll send you guys over to Jesse then. But go watch the YouTube video before you watch Jesse. <laughs> I'll rate Jesse. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And thanks for watching. Uh, raid is ready in a couple seconds. Uh, yeah, all right. Raid is ready in five, four, three, two, one. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. Peace.